Hello and welcome to the Stove Show. Before we start, I have to, something I want to say to the audience. Now, I have to go back to my work on the State of the Union speech. And I worked on it pretty late last night. But I want to say one thing to the American people. I want you to listen to me. I'm not going to say it again. I did not have sexual relations with that woman, Miss Lewinsky. I never told anybody to lie. Not a single time. Never. These allegations are false, and I need to go back to work for the American people. Thank you. <laughs> well, well apologized, Stover. Welcome to the Stove Show. Brat, brat. It's been a minute, folks. It's been a while. Apologies. Um, at the table we have Reginald P. Spivey and Nicholas Genrich, aka NJ, aka Joey Guns, aka Odyssey, aka your girlfriend's favorite color. <laughs> You got the <laughs> laugh, but that was a pretty lame string, brother. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, um, before we start, we have a quick ad for our affiliate sponsor on it. Um, they just came out with their new Total Primate Care. And what it is, is that they've based their whole thing, whole, like, all their supplements, so they can create like a day a pack. So they have the packs here, and they have... You, you think, mean a pack a day still? A day a pack? A, a pack a day. Okay. So they have one at night, that you, like a pack of vitamins. Okay. You take it in the morning, and one you take at night. Oh. And it's just so you have like a great day. That's all they want. So the morning ones enhance neurotransmitter function. Okay. So they help you with your brain cells. You get your... Think more clearly. Yeah. Crisper response times. Um, they Shut maintain down. cellular energy. Yeah. And they nourish bones and joint with their, uh, I believe it's... Coral calcium or yeah. strong bone in the uh, in the for that and as an old fart with arthritic knees. That's a good thing. Yeah, and they start your day with powerful nutrients. So that one includes just to quickly go over it. Uh, strong bone, which is just, has a bunch like strontium and helps with joints and everything. Yeah. Uh, Shroom tech immune, which helps in immunity. Alpha brain, which is their uh, nerve nootropic. Shroom tech sport, which helps with the B12 getting flowing through your body. It has two caps of Perilia and Corilia, oh. which are two mi microgreens. Two twins I dated in junior high. <laughs> Just kidding. And it has krill oil to keep everything nice and oiled. <laughs> nice. You want to keep. <laughs> yeah, you want to keep everything nicely. Well, oiled. actually, what was the other product they had there still? The the kettle. Ball? Yeah, the kettle ball. Get to that. Nice. And the night pack boosts mood and serotonin levels. Nice. All right. Provides nice. relaxation and tranquility. Tranquility. Assists the immune way, like immune function in two ways. And nourish use while you sleep, and that one includes New Mood, which is their uh, like happy supplement. Gotcha. Makes, and my mom takes it, and whenever she takes it, she seems to be in a way better mood than when she doesn't take it. So kids, buy some of this and slip it into your parents' drinks. Yes, and it's vitamin C and lysine, which I talked about last week, last episode, not last, last week, not last, 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 last not year. Not, yeah, uh, we have Shumtek Immune again, immunity. It has the coral calcium, which works with the uh, strong bone. Again, it has the two Sprilia and Corilia and two, one Krill Oil. The other product they came out with is probably my favorite product I've ever seen. It is a picture, it is a kettlebell, and I'm going to show this to everyone, of a monkey who has just wants to bite your dick off, and it's a kettlebell. It, it, it's certainly a face with evil monkey intentions. Yeah. yeah. Um, I believe it's a 35-pound kettlebell, and it's just really well done. They wanted to make it look cool because kettlebells don't look that cool, mm -hmm. but they also wanted to be functional. Because mm -hmm. there's kettlebells like this that like look like dragons, but they're not functional. So they started with like thirty. They're seriously, kettlebells like shaped like dragons. Yes. Nice. All I could see is like me skewering my buddy in the side of the head with a dragon wing as I yeah. was like lifting a kettlebell. Yeah. So basically, they started out. They molded it so it has a flat bottom. Okay. So it's easier to you know easier to store, but it also gives that circular like. The field geometry. Yeah, you'll do it. And for those folks that can't uh, see the picture of this, uh, again, check it out online, guys. But it's it's a typical kettlebell handle, but it's a very ornately drawn monkey skull that looks very angry at you. Yeah. And here's the thing, folks. If you want to improve your core strength, who wouldn't want to do it by throwing a monkey around the room? Especially like, one that looks pissed off. An angry monkey. Yeah. Like, like to me, that's almost like a, a rite of manhood passage, right? Has like, to be. At some time <laughs> in your life, every person should be locked in a room with an angry chick. It's your workout bar mitzvah. <laughs> your workout bar mitzvah. I love that. The, um, you know what? The thing I just use it for, if anyone comes into my house, I'm just going to throw the monkey at them. Just huck it across the room. Well, that's why, that's why, actually, just to change the subject really quick, um, we're in my basement right now. Do you still have your knife by your bed? Uh, I keep 
mad weapons in my room. And I just want to... I just <laughs> Really? My I don't opinion think, of you just shifted. I, I don't think this that it's crazy. Into like, a, I got a, a snuff pod. I got a paddle right here. I got a big, huge... No, the paddle's not... I, I was going to say, I didn't even want to mention the paddle, dude. I don't want to know what you're using that for. Well, no, it, it's, it's for protective purposes. I got a knife in that drawer. I got, like, a, like a meat cleaver in that drawer. I got, a, like, a giant, like... Three foot pizza knife behind my bed. Have you wronged the mutt Russian mob or something that we should know about? I just, know about you know what? Or... I you call it paranoia. Pissed off some jihadists. I or... call it being prepared. <laughs> You're like a you boy never scout. know. Okay, I, I'm calling this stuff now. When you get old and fat and bald, like is coming, well, it's happening. <laughs> you are gonna be one of those survivalist dudes. You're oh, gonna yeah. have nine AR-15s and four years worth of like water, dry rations, and water, <laughs> and, a, and a bunker somewhere up near Radiation City in northern Saskatchewan. Yep. You're, yep. you're accepting that? I am accepting that. That is your life plan and you're yeah. running with it? And you know what, though? <laughs> People, you can say that those guys are crazy, like whatever, they're paranoid, but if something were to ever happen, you're going to wish that you were that guy. Or you can buy an Onyx 10-pound steel mace. Ah, that they use for working out. Let me see. So it's a workout mace that can also double as a zombie basher. Yes. Nice. And it's only 40 bucks. I might look into this. <laughs> Nick needs more weapon paraphernalia for his basement. Well, like, everything in this room can be used to beat somebody. Like, I have a mini keg there. Like, imagine getting hit over the head with that. Like, it would work. Yeah. Did, how long have you been harboring this fear of everything? Uh, basically, since I moved into the city. I mean, when you live out of town, it's kind of like... It's, it's like whatever, but uh, when I was younger, I always had like fears of people breaking into the yeah. house and stuff, yeah. and it, it was just something that I've had for a long time, so it's just like, if you're looking to break into my house, it's the wrong house, that's all I have to say. That's fair, I mean, I, I'm the other way, like, A, the odds of, of really being affected by crime are really low. You but know? you live well, in the most dangerous city in Sus in Canada. Yeah. yeah, and I live downtown in the most dangerous city in Canada, and honestly, most of the folks I run into, we do. We have a ton of homeless folks around our building and stuff, and just hanging out downtown. Most of them are cash. Hell, I mean, they're, they're good folk. Did you hear yeah. the one guy died? Yeah, that yeah, album yeah, 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 it's unfortunate. He was yeah. a nice guy. Yeah, yeah. I've never met him, but it seems like he's like, a nice he, he was the dude in the wheelchair, right? Um... Yeah, he had like a whole story in the paper about him. Yeah, yeah. My right. my wife knew what coffee he liked, so on the way to work every day or, or every other day, she'd buy him a coffee at McDonald's when she got hers. And yeah, they were yeah. buddies. They'd have a visit. He was a nice guy. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. But no, I don't know. I just I like to I like to be prepared. I like to be protected. Also, there's that whole zombie thing. I'm you, you're like, just sure it's happening. I'm well. I'm not sure it's happening now. God, but I mean, I with the way that the world has been recently, it wouldn't surprise me. I disagree with that thing, because here's the thing, the world's better now than it's ever been. If you're a woman today, it's better now than it was even 15 years ago. Okay, okay so if you're a woman, it's better, but no, if no, you're no, a but human you're, being, okay, it so, sucks. So, dude. Boo. <laughs> yeah, let's, you know, let's enjoy the plague. Guess what? We're going right into it. Make fun of Nick's well, segment. And that's what kills. <laughs> is this, this, this is on the list, make fun of Nick, isn't it? Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Christmas. All right. But no, but, and here's my thing. And, and dude, I'm not, I'm not harshing how, how you view things. Harshing? Oh my God, that was old man. <laughs> but it's more, all of these people like that talk about the good old days. Yeah. Oh, remember back in the 50s when, you know, everything was great. No, if if you were black, it was shitty. You okay, couldn't but vote. There was I have three Jim white Crow guys. Laws. Okay, but I'm I'm gonna quote Louis C.K. here and say that I'm a white man, yes. white male, and I can go back into any oh, time yeah, period, yeah, yeah. and it's awesome. Yeah, but for but for you realize us right now, why he's pointing that out. Right? We're getting <laughs> bombed and destroyed, and you know, like it's everything. Good. And no, it's not good. Let's look objectively at white the men world, in history. The they world haven't been very nice. The world is we're dying assholes. around yeah. us. The earth is dying around us, and we're sitting here drinking two liter bottles of coke out of plastic. Like yeah, yeah. ours is glass, but okay. I, I understand that, and that's fair. But but I mean, here's my point: Why is the world dying around us? Because of a bunch of greedy old white dudes. Exactly. Yeah. I'm still. I'm not saying that. So I'm saying let's get let's let's keep the 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 fall of the white dude happening, and let's lift up some of the other folks. That's how we get hurt. Yeah, and I'm fa and I'm fine with that. I honestly think we would be better if if greedy white men just took a step back and let everyone else drive for a while. I genuinely believe that. You know how brutally white people would be treated? Good. No. We I deserve... Think, I don't think... We deserve would. so much shit no. from over the years. No, because here's... Okay, so here's the best example I can give you on that one, Nick, would be the end of slavery. Every white person in the South, anyone who's seen Lincoln, you know, at the end of the movie when they got it done, 
everyone down in the south was like, oh, these slaves, they're going to be pissed off, man. Like, 400 years we did this to them. We're horrible. I guess 300 and then Adam. Now, but the whole point is, is that that they were all sure that they were just going to rise and revolt. And it was more the, the folks when they left the plantations and started moving north was just more, oh, thank God that's over. They weren't looking for revenge. They just wanted to get their lives going. I, I don't, I don't know. And, and here's the thing. For me, it all breaks down to you're either wired to be more concerned about security or more concerned about fairness, right? Conservative people are, are more concerned about security. And, and I don't front them that. I'm more concerned with fairness. So, I mean, everything comes through that filter for me. And, yeah. and again, old, greedy white men are not the most fair group of people no, in the world, right? Yeah. So, how have your months been? A good. Our months. Busy. Our months. It's been a month. It's been about yeah, a month and a half. Yeah. Has everyone's month and a half been good? Mine has been awesome. I don't know. Uh, who wants to start? Go ahead, man. I yeah. will start. Okay, um, I've had three shows since we last talked. What what shows? Uh, they've they've been good. Um, Is it Woo Block? Woo Block. Nice. Um, ASAP Rocky. How did the ASAP Rocky show? Uh, ASAP mm. Rocky was okay. Uh, to me, it felt awesome while I was on the stage, but actually watching the video after it was kind of rough. Was it? And the crowd, the crowd was very um, stoned. No, no, it wasn't even that. The crowd <laughs> that was help, right? <clears throat> the crowd was hard. Yeah. You, know, you get those hard crowds uh, and then Swollen Members I had like five days after ASAP Rocky and it was just badass mm -hmm. like we chilled with Mad Child and, the, and then before the show and stuff like that and it, it was awesome so <clears throat> that's where was sw Swollen Members at? Uh, uh, Odeon oh was it? Oh, yeah, oh, they were so that smoothed over then yeah yeah. everything was everything was good good so, man I'm glad yeah. to hear that so everything worked out and uh, oh man I don't know what else I've uh, been dating this new girl mm -hmm. things are going great with that um <laughs> Finally kind of moved into my new place completely, myself anyways. He's got all his weapons stashed. Yeah, he's got all, got, got all my weapons stashed, so I'm officially moved in. That's when I can say that it's done. Nice. Um, I don't know what else has been going on this week, or this month, I and guess. Um, oh, uh, I've been working on a new album. Um, rather than I chose to, uh, you know, we were going to go head the route of the EP. Um, I chose to step back, and we're just going to jump into a full length nice. i figured the profit margin for an ep is really small because you can only sell them for around a buck a song yeah. which would work out for a six track ep i'd probably sell it for five yeah. whereas if i make a 12 track full length i can probably go 15 yeah. i can probably jump myself a bit so you know uh working on that next project it's called black nice. um it's really a good project so far and uh yeah it's about half done being nice. recorded and mixed and mastered and i have one single out called she said and it's uh, a Jackson 5 sample, and it's gorgeous. Nice. And, uh, Ooh, baby, baby, don't know your thing. That's not how the song goes, but okay. Dude, that, that hurt, bro. That, that was rough. No, no, I mean in the most awesome way. Uh, you, you've missed your calling, brother. Um, I, you should have been well, one of the Jackson. Um, you should have been Tito Jackson. In a Jackson 6. If, we, uh, if, if everyone sticks around to the end of the show, you might hear an acoustic set. By Jordan Stover. Oh, the stove geez. unplugged. Uh, the lost sessions. Stover, of the how's your month and a half been, brother? Um, ah, blah, boring, long. I I haven't done anything exciting. I've really just put about forty five hours into Football Manager. Oh, nice. <laughs> What's Football Manager? So it's like a game, isn't it? Yeah. So imagine like being like. Well, like a manager of a European soccer team. Oh, okay. That's all you are. You're the manager of a European soccer team. And you have to build your team up. And you've put 40 or 50 hours in I've put 99 hours into it since Christmas. Really? You, Matt. How's your team doing? <laughs> Teams. <laughs> Teams uh, up. Because you can be, you, like, you, I can be man, you are, I can be, like, so. Gotcha. So, um, my one team, I'm playing as Celtic. Yeah. From the Scottish League. Cause Absolutely. I like, so I'm them. And I'm playing as Byron Munich. Nice. So those are the two teams. Uh, I put 99 hours into anything. Oh, dude, I, I don't even want to think about the hours I've dumped into Skyrim. It's disgusting how much of my life But you've also into... done it with a significant other. Oh, yeah, the wife and I sit there and play together, but still, it's just a... Dis even if you take that number and cut it in half, it's a disgusting amount of time. <laughs> like, any time I pause and go, oh, man, I'm so behind at work, at Skyrim. That's, that's what, I, or MLB the show, those two. Oh, How many hours I have you been put in the show? show? Oh, I love. The show. I mean, I, I had the eleven, and I've been been playing it for years. I just got the thirteen, so yeah, I'm just starting my new guy. But it, there's been a ton. Like, Do you like the Bigs games, the the Jays. I've never played the Bigs games. No. The 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 Jays have won the World Series a few times now. Let's <laughs> put it that way. 
Like so from the double A to the bigs and winning the World Series. Okay. Times. Well, um, so we do have a segment <laughs> called Make Fun of Nick. So we have to figure out how to make fun of Nick, because we did it last well, okay, week. Okay, let's be real about this, though. Finding ways to make fun of Nick... Isn't that hard? No, it's, it's really quite easy. You just have to stare at him for about eight seconds, and then he'll get awkward and make a face. He'll be like, oh, I've got my Jackson is. 5 sample. <laughs> this gorgeous Jackson. Well, no, dude, I still like you as Tito Jackson, and for the rest of my life, when I view the Jackson 5, you're going to be standing there holding the vase with an afro. It's going to be gorgeous. I, I, can, I can Photoshop that for you if you I want. I mean, the thing is, it's been so long since we sat down and chatted, Nick hasn't had a chance to say anything stupid or inflammatory for us to make fun of. Well, I did just let you know that there's weapons all over my bedroom. I guess maybe there could be a little self-preservation in there. Okay, so let's look, hey, let's look into that, Nick. So let's, let's just therapize him here. The, the real threat, like if, if someone really came in here while you were sleeping and tried to hurt you, do you think you would get to the cleaver before they got to you, or... Okay, he's, he's now moving to his bed. He's showing us that he's now... He can flip it open, and there's actually a cleaver in <laughs> his nightstand. So, okay, so my next question then is, Nick, what happens when you have a lady over and you're entertaining her? Oh, she knows. No, but my point is, is that maybe you meet this lady or whatever, and... You know, and, and she comes back to your place, and you don't know each other super well at the start of a relationship. And, you know, you're out of the room. She kind of looks in your nightstand and sees a cleaver. Well, I, I normally let him know beforehand because, like, it's in my condom drawer. But do you realize, Nick, <laughs> Actually, that... right now, it, that's not really a condom drawer. It's a knife drawer. Really? And so then there's another large bladed weapon hidden behind the same table. So, okay. <laughs> so, I mean, you're paranoid. <laughs> and you date women that are okay with dating a guy with many edged weapons around the bed. I could see that being hard, like for I, I, maybe it's my... his kink. <laughs> <laughs> so the women that like okay, no, that makes sense to me. The, the women that like Nick are also the same type that are attracted to serial killers because there's yeah. always crazies that send letters. Like Charlie Manson gets love letters and stuff. Yeah, and he's not even a good looking guy. He's like seventy five now. Kind of looks like me. I love him. Stove, you look nothing like Charles <laughs> Have Manson. Have you seen Charles Manson? He's a rail of a human being with a swastika carved in his head. You're you're like a jolly, friendly fellow. I want to go have I want to go have a beer with you. Charles Manson's like, damn, you just don't want to look at him. He's <laughs> Does he really have a swastika? Yeah, I don't know. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, he, he he's got a little swastika carved into his. Is he forehead. a white supremacist? Well, it, it, he... Okay, We're just I, insane. Well, he... he uh, Both. Uh, okay, <laughs> what, what happened with Charles Manson was he was like a ringleader, right? So he had all these followers following him. And um, a lot of the books I've read on it suggest that he was kind of losing control of the group. Uh, there, there was another young guy, the, the Tex... I can't remember his last name. Tex, whatever it was. He was one of the ones charged with uh, the Sharon Tate killing. Yeah. Um, but they had never got into it to start killing, killing people. His big prediction was that there was a race war coming. And that's what Helter Skelter was, you know, when they wrote it on the walls yeah. and stuff. Um, so he, he was certainly against blacks. He was really paranoid about Jewish people. Um, so that's where the swastika came from later when he was in prison. But no, the... Uh, again, he was just a guy that that ran a cult and did a ton of drugs and and, and like a ton of chemical drugs. Like I honestly think he started out a musician, um, and then he just kind of broke his brain a bit. But but the plan was never to murder people. It, it was more he was losing control, so he had to do something big to keep control of the group, and it ended up being murder because he made everyone like come around and stab the body once and stuff too. Yeah, like, yeah, it, it was yeah. a wonky situation. Yeah. yeah. Um, ha happy times, listeners. Yeah, yeah, no, but um, let's try and make fun of Nick. The thing I, you know, I always talk to Nick, and I always bring my problems to Nick. I don't know why. You know, Nick's not a therapist or anything. It's like but I think your, I do a pretty good job. It's like taking your car to a butcher to get it. In, yeah, like, Nick's, Nick's like, nah, you just need to change up your style. You need to, that's the first thing. It's not, you know, Stove... You need to learn how to talk to women. No, hey, let me let me no. defend myself hey, at this barrage of criticism coming my way. First of all, when you come to me for advice on women, I feel like that is a good thing because I'm not bragging here, but because But I of, get a lot of women. No, that no. Let but me tell you. I'm a ladies. I wear an American Eagle t-shirt. I'm so awesome. Because blah, blah, blah. I because wear of gray golf shorts cuz I'm in here. Because of my hobbies, 
because of my hobbies, I have to be involved with a certain amount of female. Because most, let's be honest, most of my fans are females, which kind of sucks. Because uh, I'm a I'm sexy a musician, musician. And all the women love me. Kay. Oh, I'm a rap star from Saskatoon. That means I get all the pretty bitches. High More class than you. trim. High class trim. Now, really quickly. <laughs> Can I go? Yeah, yeah please, can I go, go ahead. Kay. We're not going to interrupt you at all. Okay, <laughs> okay. So, when you come to me and ask me for help because of that, because you see me with females and stuff, and I'm not going to lie, it's been like six since my breakup in October. I'm not bragging once again. I'm just trying to not make my bragging, point. Not bragging, guys. I had so many women. Yeah. Can I'm just, hands I'm just trying to make my point because you're telling me that I don't get women and I do. No, I, I think what he's saying is, no, I, I think he's admitting that you get women or, or, or that you, you at least have more capability in that field than he does. But I think I he was more getting at the advice you give. Okay, I so, exploit so no. so self-esteem. So when, when I... <laughs> when I, <laughs> I, I prey on the ones with feelings. When, when he comes to me with... turning into George Bush. It's slowly <laughs> turning into George W. Bush, isn't it? <laughs> Tur- tourists. We're going to hate these tourists. <laughs> okay, but no. Uh, when you come to me with girl advice, I give honest advice. You know me. I'm brutally honest. That's, yes. That's, yeah. All that's what time. I ask. And I, I, I would, I, when I ask for advice, I would rather somebody be honest and blunt than, you know, that's fair. you know, cower and just be like, tell you what you want to hear, right? Because obviously, if I'm coming to you for advice, I don't just want to hear what I want to hear because that's already what I'm thinking, right? Mm. So, when it's a conundrum. Yeah, basically. So when you come to me and ask for for advice on girls and stuff, I tell you bluntly and honestly what you need to do. And I appreciate that. That's because not my bi- that's we just, we just girls- needed to coax you into talking about how great you are with women so we could mock you about it for three or four minutes. With the girls that talk to me about you, they all kind of have the same things. Because believe me, Stove, girls talk to me about you. Yeah. yeah. They're like, tell me about that Stove guy. Yeah, well, no. And I just it's want just- to climb him like a mountain. And, and, and I'm, not, I'm not ragging on you, telling you that you're, you know, you got to change who you are because no because you're awesome and girls as Brett Nelson would say as Brett Nelson awesome thank you <laughs> and uh but no it's it's just we gotta go on a shopping spree because that that's the number one thing that girls are telling me all right but, I agree and, and but it's never I never hear out of your mouth no, you should learn how to talk to women are you are you no, sure no, because hey, yesterday this. are you sure because Specifics? yesterday no, I, because yesterday I said I was giving you specific examples on how to talk to girls that you don't follow. I said you got to be funny, quirky. You got to make fun of them a little bit, but not to the point where it'll hurt their feelings. I love it. So just folks, I'm sitting right now listening to what, like a 16-year-old guy talk about here's how you woo women. Dude, if you think you figured, I, I can't wait to do you at 25 to listen back at this going, I had no clue. Well, no, women at this age. Oh, yeah, no, okay, I'll, I'll give you that one. Yeah, that they they, they 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 don't care. Like they really, honestly, the nice guy act. You I'm, it's don't not get an me wrong. He's a nice guy. No, no, I'm saying I'm saying the guys who are dickheads who put on oh, the nice guy. Oh yeah, act, okay, that's that's. Different. Those are the guys who are going to get the girls right off the bat yeah. because they they want a bad boy. And here here here's the here's the thing that I thought of the other night while I was watching Breaking Bad. And I don't know why I thought of this while I was watching Breaking Bad, but it was just kind of like it came in. I head. just love mess. Let's be honest, Jesse Jesse's hunky. Anyway, well, I like yeah. him. He's classy. Um. So, so basically, the the you have to go for bad girls, party girls. I don't think. Here's the reason: the good girls have not been hurt by a bad guy yet, so they're still searching for that bad guy. The bad girls have already been hurt by that bad guy, which is why they're bad, and now they know better than to keep going back to that bad guy. So they're looking for a nice guy. You know what? I'll give you that. There's sound logic to that. That that's a logical. It's a vicious cycle. Well, and it, 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 I saw it on the internet, and it was worded way differently, but it's like, um, bitches turn nice guys into assholes, which in turn turn good girls into bitches, and it's just oh, okay. a vicious cycle. it just cycle. keeps feeding itself. And it, it kind of makes I mean, sense. Like, here's the thing, the one for me, like, like when I was, uh, what, like 15, I, I was kind of, you know, I was just getting started with this girl, and, yeah. and her parents mm. loved me. Yeah. And, it, and when you're trying to get together with a 15 year old the worst thing that can happen is their parents love you yeah. like they like we go I go hang out to watch a movie and her parents would call me up to have a beer with them and bullshit yeah 
no, and, and of course, it fell apart very quickly thereafter. No 15-year-old girl wants the guy that mom and dad approve of. The, like you said, there's that element of danger in the bed. Yeah. Right? And and so in a lot of those cases. So, yeah, someone that's been burned by that before, I, I, I agree. That makes that's, sense. Well, and, that, and that's why, like, uh, with, in my current relationship right now, it's like she's already been that there yeah, with yeah. those bad guys mm -hmm. and i'm you know i'm coming Let's in be honest nick you are kind of a douchebag i uh, know i'm you, kind you're, of I'm, you're the gray area between nice guy douche i'm a douchebag is the gray area on and that piff here, between those two guys here, you know what and here's the thing i'm really nice to people <laughs> that i like i'm really nice to people that i like i i put it all on the table for my friends my family and everybody that i that i uh that i that i like but people that i dislike I am the biggest d bag in the world, That's and it's fair. and it's I, I just feel like you know if I love everyone, I'm and all about love. And it's kind of like but, but yeah, like hugging. no, it's just <laughs> it's Happy like snow. she she's already been to that position yeah. where she's been with those kind of kind of bad guys, and I'm coming in, and both of her parents do really like me, yeah, yeah. and you know and and it's okay, it's not a huge deal to her. No, no, because yeah. she, and you know what, and she's always inviting me over for, you know, like, what, this and that. Yeah, and, and I mean, like, because what I was just getting at, and again, so I've waited out, brother. I, like, because it, it's, it's again, the, the nice guy to most girls your guy's age is, is it, it's a friend. That's it's how you view it's it. It's weak. Yeah. Like, and it's, it's not super, they view you, there's nothing attractive about yeah, it. Yeah, well, and yeah, and it's, there's nothing attractive about it, and they view you almost as, like, a brother figure, or yeah. maybe, like, a cousin figure or something, yeah. and I, wow. I've learned that. Because but, and, and again, but what I can tell you is, by the time, and it's usually in the early to mid 20s once you've been burned a time or two by the guy who you know treats you like crap to make you feel bad about yourself and, and those guys like we know those guys yeah yeah um prey on insecurities like you said earlier once they have been burned a couple times by that they start looking for a partner like a friend to be with the and, rest of their life and, and the cool. and the guy who's been that nice guy who's been their friend since early years of high school is going to be one of the top candidates for that position so yeah really waiting it out is... well and that's the thing when i was in uni i was a younger guy and growing up i was always very much the oh you're, i see you more as a friend and i'm like just don't say that just say hey i'm not attracted to you because yeah. then i know yeah um i see you as more of a friend a 15 year old person can in their mind flip that and go well that means there's still a chance mm -hmm. right yeah that's, that's how most folks look at that stuff no and and it, it, it's it, it's yeah. the friend zone. But the big thing is, friend zone doesn't exist. It's a bunch of bullshit. No, it does. It does is, exist. Is confidence, confidence is what it is. Like the other thing is, gosh, now that I'm married and stuff, like you're not even worried because I mean, you know, you're married. But I get checked out more and hit on more since I got married than I ever was when I was single. Well, because when you're with somebody, you're confident. You're not and exactly. That's, and that, that's what I noticed in my. And you're not. That's what I noticed in my past relationship yeah. because I was with somebody who was attractive to me, who I was attracted to, and that that whole idea of do I look good all the time didn't matter anymore yeah. because I felt like I did all the time when I was with her. All of a sudden, while I was with her, so many other girls, like, texts and stuff, mm. like, I like you, I wish you wouldn't be with her, blah, 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 blah. I have blah. women text me. I got so many women. I'm not, you guys, you dude, they were just it. saying that. That's why we're making fun of you for it. Dude, the, the segment is called Make Fun of Nick. We just need to find How much longer is this segment? Because well, we've been stuck on stupid for like five minutes. It's probably time to move on, but we will, we will we'll go on to my segment, because we don't want to do exploring hip-hop with NJ in the first half. As I have it here, because it's just that shitty. Again, still in the Nick making fun of Nick segment. You're an asshole. <laughs> All right, <laughs> first um, we have a stove rant. Stove rant. Okay. Um, I'm gonna preface this. What are you ranting about, brother? Justin Bieber. Oh, nice. And Anne Frank. Oh, had a little, oh yeah. <laughs> um, now I do not mean to, for this to fall on National Hol Holocaust Memorial Day. I think it's a good day to talk about. But it's probably a good day to talk about it. So, um, if you could cue me in about eight seconds. Okay. I'm pumped for this round, I'm excited. to be honest. Yeah. And go. Hey, Mr. Justin Bieber, here's a little tip from your friend the stove. Blah, blah. What you need to do is don't go to Amsterdam, and you were probably high while you did this, so I'm not going to be mad at you, but don't go to Amsterdam. Don't go to the Anne Frank house. And then go walk around and talk about how it's a powerful experience for you. And then go to the little right book and be like, Anne was a great girl. She would have been a believer. No one cares she was a believer. You're not going to be popular in two years. You're like the bad version of Aaron Carter. And no one <laughs> wants that. That was hurtful. <laughs> okay? You're going to be gone in two years. You've released nine Christmas albums. 
You're like, like you're like a male version of Mariah Carey. <laughs> you have 15 seconds left. So dude. guess what, JB? I'm gonna come to you and bring you the show. I am Jordan Stover. Call me up. I'll even put my number out there. Me and you, buddy. Blah. Wow. That Aaron Carter. That was that, that was, was that was pretty well played. That was yeah. I mean, here, here's the thing on that. Like, this is a kid who. I mean, I never watched that movie. What was what was his little documentary movie that they? Never never, give up. never. No, it was never say never. Never say never. So the whole thing is that yeah, here's dad with Justin playing drums when Justin was two. This kid has been preened to be a performer since pretty much birth, right? Yeah, yeah. And so he's had handlers and people around him the whole time. And when it blows up and gets as huge as it's gotten, everyone in his life pretty much daily feeds him, oh, you're awesome, you're amazing. The, the kid should be able to put aside his own ego for one day and, and realize that the Holocaust and Anne Frank and all of that stuff's a little bigger than he is. Yeah. But instead, he has a, she would have been a believer. Well, you're an idiot. And then and he's a dumb kid. I don't know. The, the thing I find interesting about him is you can see the tide turning on him. Like, there was a story on CBC Today. They pulled his bus over, and they found drugs on the bus. And Again. Yeah. Like, most of his mentions in the news lately have been negative. There was a big deal about him being for late for a show in London. But you know what, though? And Well, and he's got and a bunch of tattoos and, uh, now. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what, though? I can't blame him. Because I'm going to... I don't, I'm not gay. I don't like him and like, I'm not attracted to him at all or anything like that, but I respect his career. Yeah. I respect what he's done and coming into the music business at 15 when he was, he had no idea what he was getting himself into oh, yeah. and yeah. signs a major deal, no doubt for three studio albums. That's still not up by the way. He's on another one to go. Mm. He had no clue what he was getting himself into yeah. and became Probably the most famous person in the world when Baby came out. That was the most viewed video on YouTube. Yeah. Until and, recently. Until recently with Gangnam Style. But, like, seriously, like, oh, man. Like, all that pressure. What if what everybody if, in the it, world. It, it's everybody, gotta be, it's got to be a head trip. For and me. it's, and, you know, and he's growing up and he's 17, 18 now. And he's getting treated like a little child. And he's got little 9, 10-year-old girls running around screaming his name. No 17 18 year old guy wants that and i can i can i'm almost positive of that like you know it's one of those things that if you asked any kid hey would you trade places with Bus justin bieber they'd be like oh yeah that'd be awesome until they had to actually live through it or and, well, and even what the, money, I, the money's awesome but, but the, you get to hang out with usher well let's be honest who, who wouldn't want to hang out with usher well and yeah. yeah but no that's just my whole take on his whole career is that like He's been picked apart by everybody, and the whole world is just waiting, you know, oh, yeah, no. fingers crossed, waiting for him to fuck up. And that's, and that's, what, just and that's Britney what I'm Spears getting, all over again. That, yeah, exactly. And that's what I was getting at, Nick. That South Park episode with Britney Spears, yeah. where, where they make it out like it's a cultural sacrifice that we all yeah. do together. His time is starting to turn. Yeah. The the media is, is always where it starts. The the talk about him turns negative. Everything we hear about him is in a negative light because he's not he, he can't go back in time and be the fifteen year old kid that he was and everyone wants him to. Well and I mean what's the problem with him being a bad guy and still singing? After this record label is up with Who's he even side to? I mean, it's not, like he, it's not like he beat the hell out of his girlfriend and then later got back together with her and criticized anyone who suggested <laughs> Chris he, Brown. he was a douchebag for beating the hell out of his girlfriend. Well, and oh, I, I mean, fall off your jet. I mean, look at Michael drown. Jackson <laughs> back when he was. Look at Michael Jackson. He was in the he was in the spotlight since he was like what, like oh, five and, years well, old. And, 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 and insane. He became what? well, no, and he became. Here's the other thing, Joe. There was abuse stuff there too. Joe Jackson was a horrible human being. Oh, his, I, his father, like yeah, yeah. Michael Jackson. That's just a sad life. Well, yeah, but I mean, can I, can we, Michael Jackson from outside looking yeah. in, like, the, like when right after his dad, there was a bunch of interviews with his kids. Yeah, he seemed like a decent dad. Yeah. He seemed like he was trying to do the best for it and trying to keep him out of the spotlight and trying to have a fun time with him. You know, I, I, the one, one thing I always remember is the daughter talking about, oh, how she was. Uh, Latoya was talking about how she would always make like pancakes yeah. or something like that. Okay. For uh, like no, no no like the actual daughter Michael Jackson would talk about oh, how, like, how oh, he would make okay so sorry you mean his his life as a father with his kids he yeah. actually did his best to be a pretty good dad. yeah sorry I, I thought you meant his dad Joe no no, no, like, no his dad no, no, Joe no. was a horrible human being yeah no, no. so and, and I was like that that sounds positive and you hear all like the stupid like did he like like the whole like 
Neverland Ranch fiasco. Well, and I mean, again, like when when you look at Michael Jackson, obviously he lost his childhood. Now, yeah, yeah. Whether it was because he was performing all the time or whatever yeah. abuse and stuff happened with his dad and all of that, but at some point, he just wanted to stay a child forever. Um, and then when that wasn't possible, yeah, he locked himself away in his Neverland Ranch and. And he did his best to be a pretty good parent, by yeah. all accounts, like you said, from what I yeah. heard, too. That, and that's what I think this whole Justin Bieber thing is, yeah. because he got his childhood stripped from him. His teenage years, mind you. Uh, the, I think it's a big difference between childhood, like, childhood yeah, like, and I mean, teenagers and, are two different but, things. I mean, yeah, Michael still, Jackson was, like, six or seven when they started turning yeah. up on television. Like, Imagine if it was... Still, though, I mean, like, you got... He's still gonna be big for a long time whether he you know continues to make good music or not people are still going to care about him and he, he's a successful there's nothing brand. that he can do and and michael jackson had that whole bad guy act later on in his career and when it wasn't so much bad guy it's just like when when you're still 40 and acting or trying to act like a 12 or 13 year old yeah it's a bit weird yeah and, but it's and, understandable people who can actually think about it yeah that's the thing and 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 so his fans struggled to process that yeah and like, um, and and you know whether there was inappropriate inappropriateness or not in his part, who knows? I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, we're not um, going to question him. Yeah, well, and when it's just more that again, like if it did happen, there is a reason why, and it's the abuse that he suffered. And again, my wife works with violent offenders. Every single sexual offender she has ever dealt with, where it involved an adult and a child, every single one of them was sexually abused as a child. Every yeah. and and she's. I mean, the one group, it was 14 guys, a support group that she ran. Um, so, I mean, she's probably worked with now probably 25 or 30 sexual offenders against children. And every single one of them had, had extensive sexual abuses when they were kids. There's a cycle there. Um, and, and so if that stuff happened, that that was the root cause of it. Yeah. So. Yeah. Um, I guess this is not a... Or actually, I'll jump into Junos. So... C- Justin Bieber didn't accept. Who cares? Sorry. Justin Bieber didn't accept his award at the Junos, you know, which kind of pissed me off. Well, would you? Yes. Would you? Yes. Show up as the okay, just hold as on. a Canadian artist. As a Canadian artist, that is bold statement. Bigger than any of the other artists that were there in this day and age. Yeah. More famous. I'm not saying better. Well, I mean, more famous. If someone's gonna give you an award. Show up and get the award. The one award that he got was the Choice Award. Oh, okay. And for the fans there, for the he fan showed up. award. Wow. You, do you really need to? Yes. Uh, yeah. You have an album that came out that didn't even really no, get nominated but, but for guys, anything. Why does the award show exist so the industry can all congratulate themselves and pat themselves on the back? Well, I mean, Mad Child is independent and got nominated. <coughs> no, no, no. Yeah, but, and here's the thing, but Mad, Mad Child's a talented guy. And he, he didn't um, win, and but I'm I not mean, saying that Justin... Class one and class... Class didn't deserve it. Cla- okay, here's the thing. We talked about it last episode. Award shows are all bullshit. Yeah. yeah. And like, this was proved there to drum by up. Carly Rae Jepsen winning artist... Album. Oh, album. And single. And of single the of the year. Yeah. For Call Me Maybe. Yeah, yeah, and here's fuck the thing. that. And everyone will love her until she turns 17 or 18. Oh, she's 28. Is she that old? Yeah. When I found that oh, out, my hat really? flew off my head. It was like, I thought she was like 14. In that case, yeah. I, dude, I honestly thought... and She's 28. What? She is older than my manager. Holy oh, shit, that's like three years younger than my wife. Yeah. She's 28? Probably 29 now. Does oh. she have some sort of like genetic disorder that she looks 14 forever is she just starving herself to like what's going on with that like i thought she and bieber were pretty close to the same age not even holy crow yeah she's like, on a canadian idol and so here's the thing a third so a 30 year old woman wrote that call me maybe song yeah like it was stupid if a 15 year old had written it I wonder if she's like if she's got some sort of genetic childhood disorder that she's stuck in that state forever. Yeah, she's twenty eight. Holy shnikes, dude! Born wow. November, November twenty first, eighty four. Wow, wow. <laughs> that's exactly what my. Here's the thing, I'm and because I should be more shocked that that song won album of the year, song of the year, and all that stuff. But I'm just more sh- like she. Ugh. And she went on tour with Justin Bieber and all that. Like, how do you? Mm. No, whatever. I mean, it is what it is, but yeah. Well, and again, like you said, Stove, that really does prove what a sham the award shows are. 
The one thing I will say is when uh, Arcade Fire came out with the Suburbs, they swept the Junos, and like that's one of the best rock albums I've heard. In um, years. what was some good ones that actually Leonard Cohen won Best Songwriter? That's more a lifetime achievement. I, here's the thing: I shouldn't, <laughs> yeah. I shouldn't say that because I haven't heard his new album. Um, yeah. Leonard Cohen's a poet that tries to sing sometimes. Like he's a brilliant poet. I, th- I think he won just like singer songwriter. Okay, yeah, he, won, he won it for his writing. Okay. Yeah, and that's the that's fair. That's fair. Um, you could be. You could. I, I didn't know the other people. I was. I think shocked. City and Color was the other one, and I was like City. City, and, Co- City and Color. Yeah, yeah. Haley's obsessed with City and Color. Um, I was surprised Michael Bublé didn't win anything. Yeah, I like him. I really. He's really changed his kind of vibe lately like he's almost it's almost like he's shifting out of music to be because he hosted the Junos yeah. right yeah and he had like a song and the song was pretty catchy like, yeah. that beautiful day song is like yeah. catchy it's like that he, he throws it back to like I don't want to say he's not saying he's Sinatra but I'm saying he has a very similar style oh yeah he's, that, cool. and he's been cool. doing he's been doing hooks for hip hop songs oh, lately. really like yeah he's been really experimenting all I know is I was at the drugstore across the street from our place and there was a box of chocolates there Michael Buble chocolates and when you open the box a song of his played so I bought them for my wife as a joke and she's like really he makes chocolates with like yeah and sheepdogs didn't win any I think did they not win new group no Sheep. weekend one breakthrough artist that was the only one I was happy with. Do you have you heard the weekend? Yeah, 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 yeah. I, they uh, um, they're solid. They're do you know what I've like heard? October's very own. That's the same album that, or same label that Pe- Drake, Drake was on before yeah, he got yeah. Young Money. People so. are hating on the Sheepdogs, and I I like the Sheepdogs because they're great Canadian talent, and you know I'll very support. original. Here's here's the thing: they're hating on them because they said they're just a Canadian version of the Black Keys. They don't sound. Anything like the anything black like keys. the black. Keys. Like, I don't know, if anything, like to me, those are the sheepdogs are very much like they're yeah. they're nodding back to that don't late seventies American and guitar I, rock. I, and I see the kind of psychedelic elements at yeah, the edges. And I it. see kind of resemblance because you know the Black Keys guys produced their last album. Yeah. So I kind of see like resemblance, but they're not the same. No, not at all. And it's oh not like. Oh my gosh! Have you heard that Black Keys song with the RZA? No, uh, yeah, yeah. You oh my it. god! Is it like, good or is te- it terrible? Tears came out of my eyes. Like, was that bad? Awesome. Oh, no. Oh, okay, no. good. Yeah. Well, you know that movie that there is a director. Yeah, I'm, uh, I haven't. The I, Man with the Iron Fist. I guess what I'm watching with the wife tonight. I haven't seen Man with the Iron Fist. I am watching that. It's it's the end credit song, and it's the RZA and the Black Keys, and it's called. Uh, oh fuck! I forget what it's called, but it's awesome. Really? Oh yeah, it's damn. awesome. Okay, I will check that. Who else out. is in that? I think Russell Crowe is in that movie. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, here's the thing. Dave Batista, Kung Lee. Uh, yeah. Dave, what I yeah, heard, Batista's in that movie. What I heard about it was that it? it looks very good. It's very well shot because he was the like a production assistant or something on the Kill Bill movies with Tarantino. Yeah, that's really? where the yeah because well Rizzo did the music for it, right? Yeah. Oh, and then wow, he, he told I... Tarantino that he wanted to get into filmmaking, and so he he was like an associate producer or something like that in in those films. Um, just to see how he sets it up and how he shoots it. So it's supposed to look really good. The story itself isn't supposed to be great, but the kung fu and the fighting stuff is supposed to be really no. good. The story and the music's supposed to be mint. Obviously, the, 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 the music's good. Um, the fighting is. You okay. have to enjoy cheesy kung fu, oh, movies. and because that's what I was going to say. Part of loving kung fu movies, and I do, is that they're all shitty. The stories are all shitty. The acting is all shitty. Well, and it's so unrealistic. Like they're just they'll do backflips yeah. out of nowhere and, and, and stuff. And it's, it's almost like... like when it's bad, it's kind of it's a lot like horror. Like, yeah. I, I would much rather watch a, a terrible horror movie that doesn't take itself seriously. Yeah. Than a decent horror movie well, that does yeah. take itself. And there is actually in the movie. Yeah, yeah, I know, that's what character. I mean. Like he's yeah. the star of it and yeah. directed it and the whole shit. Yeah, but it, it's good. It's cool. really good. I'll check the, actually, um, I think I'll be watching that. Uh, tonight. But yeah, yeah, but he did that song with the Black Keys, and it was actually pretty good. And so. the thing that I noticed, people are saying, you know, how everyone was supporting Nickelback. Hear me out. Here, hear me out here. Yeah. For their first two albums, yeah. everyone supported them. Uh, I'd not- say three, because Dark Horse. <laughs> yeah, every, yeah, but you. I, every I, single song on that album. because they they had a couple that. What have they done? They had the state, the state, silver side up. What was the third one? The Dark. long road. The long that was road. The one with, uh, that was one of their biggest ones. That was the well, one I mean, with yeah. someday on it. The shit. weird thing about them was, as they got successful, everyone started hating on them. Like yeah. right when they really blew up, that's yeah, when it like, became fashionable. And then like the silver them. side up, and then they had the one photograph with on that I can't remember the name yeah, of. But and then you have the one with, you have like they had like three or four albums after. Yeah, yeah. After that. Here's the thing. They've been saying people hate them, and people supported the Black Keys as they were going up for the Rolling Stones. They were doing this. They were doing that. Now they're hating on them because of that. Wait, do you mean the Sheepdogs? Yes. Yeah, okay. So people started hating on the Sheepdogs as soon as it got big. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I mean, yeah. like, like here's the thing. I, I just think it's a stupid comparison. They're they're very different styles of music. Even though Black Keys produced the last album, that's going to be more about arranging and orchestrating. Like the sound and the feel of the music didn't feel Black Keys to me. No, and mm-hmm. I would agree. Like, I, I, again, I hear resemblance of it. Yeah. But it's not the same. But just in how it's put together, because yeah. all of the sound itself is that guitar heavy seven. Yeah, like rock that boom, sound. Do, do, yeah, yeah. I like I like that sounds like a black keys rift, but it's not the black mm. keys. Well and I mean and here's the thing, like they're they're nice guys. I, I have friends in town here that are in a band called Arms Up and they were friends with the guys that are in the Sheepdogs. And I mean, they were the 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 house band at Lydia's for like three or four years here in Saskatoon. The Sheepdogs, the Sheepdogs yeah, yeah, before yeah. they went anywhere. And then they would play at Buds all the time, and then, yeah. you know, the, you and Curry bartended at the Yard and Flag, and yeah. Um, so yeah, n- no, all all love. The yeah, Sheepdogs, yeah, absolutely. All the stones, well, and, so. and here's the thing: like honestly, when I, when I first heard their stuff when they won the Rolling Stones competition and stuff, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, they're they're ripping off seventies rock. Like they're going for seventies rock. Now, as they've kept making music there's more to it than that they're yeah. actually doing some interesting stuff there uh, but it's certainly based on that 70s rock kind of psychedelic thing. finishing off before the break we'll quickly talk about this the oh. Blue Jays are oh shit I'm gonna check the score of the Yankee game right now uh, it was one nothing Jays in the second last yeah I believe the Yankees got ahead <laughs> can I just ask no I think Dickie's done meh uh, uh, he's Dick, done, he's Dickie's done a... Dickie's uh, what is he two, two, and, th- two and three now He's done met. Yeah, yeah and, and, and yeah, off the start his knuckleball wasn't moving. It's a it's a tough pitch. Uh, Four when, two Yankees in the mid fifth. Uh, so I mean, we might come back. Uh, here's what's happened. Um, I'm not freaking out yet. We we've had some unfortunate injuries. Yeah, Reyes going out. Reyes going out is a big one. But I mean, he's a guy that's been injury prone his whole career. So all the haters when we made that trade are like, oh, you watch, Reyes will get hurt in the first month, and they were right. Uh, Josh Johnson's been injury prone. He's supposed to be on the bump tonight, and we have Aaron Laffey in instead, uh, who's like a meat left-hander we picked up on waivers here about a week ago or three days ago. Um, but no, I mean, it, it's one of those things. Uh, the general pattern Where's for... Where's Romeo? Uh, Romero's down in the minors. He His head blew up last year. Yeah. Yeah, mm-hmm. so they sent him down. J.A. Happ's our fifth starter, but... Uh, but no, I mean, it's one of those situations there... Has, has he been doing good in the minors? We haven't heard anything about him. They're having to switch his mechanics. There. He always had a, a wonky pitching motion, and it always worked for him. And then last year, he just lost the motion. So now they're kind of doing a rebuild on his... Yeah, like, he, he's a guy that went from an all-star to his career could be done if yeah. he can't figure this out and get his head wrapped around, which is too bad, because I like Ricky. Um, but no, I mean, there were huge expectations. You could tell that in the start of the year... Everyone was going up to the plate trying to hit three-run homers, and you can't do that until you get guys on base. Mm-hmm. Uh, so everyone was just really pressing, live, trying to, to try and live up to the hype. Yeah. Um, really unfortunate injury to Reyes. Bautista's missed nine games already. Laurie missed the first. But Laurie's kind of bounced back, games. and he's done well. Yeah, well, the, the big thing with Laurie is his glove at third base. The guy plays a ridiculous third base, and he's his timing's starting to come around hitting. And the guy who replaced Reyes at shortstop has been doing decently. Yeah, Kawasaki, he's a pro. He's from Japan. He won a couple gold gloves over there, and, and he's a fun guy. Like he, yeah. he has a lot of fun out there. Fundamentally sound. Most, most of the Japanese pros that come over are great fundamental baseball players. Um, so, yeah, like it... Like Every, a lot, I've seen a lot of positive, like Cabrera. I'm sorry for cutting you off. That's no, all right. Because you're the expert here, but like Cabrera has done okay. He's, like, he's hitting all right. He's hitting right around 280, 290. He hasn't hit any homers yet. He's usually good for 15 or 20 homers in a season. But again, I, like, I've seen him doing all right. Like yeah. but the same, what I've seen of Bautista, he's looked all right. What, like, meh. He missed that one the other night. Yeah, what's, but, what's really killed us is we're making stupid defensive mistakes at really stupid times. Um, like there was a game in extra innings, there was a a, a misplay at third and three runs scored. So it's pretty. Or much like the double the play la- in the last Yankee Kaw- game. Yeah, Kawasaki made a an error against. Uh, uh, again, it was late against Baltimore, and he even said right after the game, "That's on me. I just lost us that game." It was an extras. Yeah. Should have been the end of the inning. He made an error. The next guy comes up and hits a single to win the game. Um, so we've had a lot of those stupid kind of mistakes. We went out and got some some recognizable pitchers. And, like, when Dickey looked great, he had a game against Kansas City, he looked unhittable. Um, and then his back starts tightening up, so we get an injury. So, But even that, like, Morrow ended up that game pretty well. You know, and Morrow's been, like, again, when he's looked good, he's looked really good. But when he's looked bad, he's looked terrible. Or so Burley's the one that surprised me. Burley's looked terrible. Well, and all. what's weird is that Burley will pitch for three innings and look great. And then he'll just leave it over the plate and give up four runs. Like, that was very much the Yankees game last night. He gave up the big home run to Cano 
after a ground ball up the middle that should have been the end of the inning. Uh, uh, Isturis misplayed it. Uh, it wasn't an error, but it squibbed through the middle when it shouldn't. So no, like pros, like the, the general managers look at a team after 60 games and go, okay, where are we at? Yeah. For, for veteran teams, as long as you're near 500 at the all-star break, the veterans will kind of get it together, have a good second half, and get you where you need to be. Um, I'm not freaking out yet. Reyes coming back at the All-Star break, and it sounds like maybe even a little sooner is going to be big. Um, so we'll just see what happens with it. But we we own the core of the team for the next three years. So even if it doesn't happen this year, we're still going to be really good next year. Josh Johnson's the only guy that we don't have signed up, and unless he has a really good season, we could get him again cheap next year. And again, Burley's the only one that scared me. He's just... He's He's a soft tossing lefty, and so when it works well and all the pitches are on the corners, he's damn near unhittable. Yeah, and he'll be like that six or seven times a season, and, and win you twelve or thirteen games over the course of a season. But he's always been a guy that's twelve and twelve. He's not going to go out and win you twenty games. I, I, I don't think people realize that just because of how small the and everyone's expectations were huge. They expected him to run out and be the best in the league by a mile and I don't think I never they just got that. off to a slow start. I yeah. never I never thought that. So no, I'm I'm still stoked about the team. I still think we're going to be good. Um it, it sucks right now because the Yankees have a ton of injuries. So these four games we have with them right now are games we should wouldn't we should win. And we lost to them last night after a lead. We had the lead today one nothing and clearly lost it. So, so I want to quickly jump on this. Yeah. Um your boy Alex Rodriguez. Oh. I uh, now I've never liked Alex Rodriguez, Rodriguez, yeah. but um, Dana White. I guess I don't know your feelings about Dana yeah, White. Yeah, well, I mean he owns UFC. He's kind of a douchebag, but yeah, um, he has Monero's disease. Yeah, are you familiar yeah, yeah, with it's, that? Yeah, it's it's like uh, yeah, yeah, I know what it is. Um, over in Germany, they have this clinic where you have to pay like seventy five hundred as like skin cell, yeah. and he got it repaired. Yeah, and he got his reference from Alex Rodriguez, yeah. which I thought was weird. And when I heard Alex Rodriguez, I was like, is that the guy people like or people hate? Well, he, he's <laughs> become hated. So the, the big thing with baseball fans and Alex Rodriguez, and he was my favorite player in the world. He, he played in Calgary when I was at, uh, just before I was at university. I yeah. uh, got called up to AAA at, as like a 17 or an 18-year-old. Okay. He didn't have the power back then, but he played beautiful shortstop. So, I mean, I remember being in the stands in Calgary watching Alex Rodriguez play. Yeah. And he was just amazing. And so then he goes to Seattle, and he's like one of the best defensive shortstops in the league. He'll hit you 25 or 30 homers, um, you know, hit 320, 330. And, and he and Derek Jeter were the two super young superstars of the game. There's another guy in Boston named Nomar Garcia Parra. Yeah. And they were all young shortstops with some power that were just great young players. Yeah. What happened was A-Rod got greedy. The, when he moved from Seattle to Texas, he took the big money. Mm -hmm. And that was really when the steroids started. And, I mean, anyone who, who's worked in athletics and knows steroids, it affects people. So he turned into a big, roided-up, angry, arrogant douchebag all the time. Um, and I remember seeing the transition. The last year or two in, he was in Seattle, I'm like, he's not the same player that I fell in love with back in Calgary. Yeah. Yeah. And started to hate him. And then when he went to the Yankees especially, he was just an arrogant, entitled douchebag. And he's making, you know, twenty, twenty five million dollars a year. And if the Yankees could get out of that deal now they would, but they're they're stuck paying him twenty five million bucks a season and he's injured. Yeah. He's, he's so I mean, he, he's just a, a classless guy. Um, and so here's the thing. Alex Rodriguez being able to give Dana White that that reference. Again it, here is him. Is disease yeah. that was giving him what he said he had eight to ten Monero's attacks a day. Yeah, and, and and good for Dana White, and it was a nice thing for A-Rod to do, but I can assure you the only reason he knew about that clinic was he was looking into, to see if it could help him cheat. Um, the reason, He's having about his knees. Yeah. Oh, what he's out for right now. Yeah, yeah. Because that, that clinic's been used for stuff like John, Pope John Paul II. Yeah, yeah. It's like blood spinning. Yeah, yeah, and, and one, it's platelet-rich plasma injection. So like, yeah. uh, Derek Jeter had it done to his knees last year. Yeah. Bartolo Colon's a 41-year-old pitcher in Oakland had it done. Yeah, I know the procedure. Yeah. But, but that is still performance en enhancement. Mm -hmm. But it's not... It's not steroids, and it's not anything like that, but... but I, feel like that, I feel like if you had to choose, if you have an injury, that's kind of... So, the biogenesis scandal. Okay, the the have you heard about this in Florida? Company With, was yes, selling yes. HG. A Rod was was buying stuff from them. Okay, yeah. um, the the steroid investigation around Roger Clemens. A Rod was connected to that one. 
if you read around baseball, every time something comes up about steroids, he's yeah. into it. Yeah. So, so this is a guy that was given all the talent in the world, would have been one of the great shortstop players all time if he, he just ran his track out and accepted what, what ability he had, and then actively went out to cheat to get more home runs because that's where the big payday was back then. And, I mean, everyone was doing it. McGuire was all huge. Sosa was all huge. Those were the stars at that time. Um, and, and he got greedy and he cheated. But for me, beyond just cheating, every time a new technology came out to cheat, he was the guy that was right there trying it. Like he. So are you calling this cheating? Like guys like Derek Jeter? No, that no, guy. no, no, no. And, 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 and here's what it is. It, it's, it's improved medical technology that helps them heal more quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, but it, that's the gray area between it, right? Because there are stories of healthy guys. Well, that's what blood doping is. Like essentially it's blood doping. So if I'm if I'm a, a cross country skier at the Olympics, yeah, I I blood dope all of the bike racers. That's what they finally caught Lance Johnson for was, was Lance Johnson. Or sorry, Lance Armstrong. Sorry, was blood doping. Yeah, uh, there was other things he was doing too. But but um, but and, and that's my statement. So it's a gray area. There are guys that use that technology healthy to get more oxygenated blood in their system. I, I yeah, like like I guess it helped cure Parkinson's. Mm -hmm. yeah. So Dana White referenced or it can. The, can can yeah. can, can. Yeah, can so, Dana, so Dana White referenced uh, Freddie Roach. Yeah, just because you know he's having a hard time yeah. trying to coach boxing with Parkinson's. Yeah, well, and the thing is, is that I mean, for for someone with like, um, sorry, it's Meniere's disease. Right? Meniere's. Meniere's. Thank you, Meniere's. Um, yeah, that that the fact that that treatment is there for him, that's awesome. Yeah. Um, for a ball player to extend his career two or three years right at the end and play into his forties, I'm okay with it. Especially yeah. a guy like Jeter, he plays for the wrong team, but you gotta respect the guys. He's he's gonna be remembered as one of the great ball players all time. So you think, like, can you put an age on it? I mean, realistically, the general pattern is guys have their peak performance as position players, uh, usually twenty six, twenty seven to about thirty two, thirty three. Okay. Like that's your your golden era, and and the way the the scale is set up in baseball is that the team has control over you as a young player. You get through your arbitration years. And that's when your big payday in free agency is. If you're like Robinson Cano, for example, he's hitting free agency a little later. He's 32, I think. Yeah, and people are, yeah. So he's still going to get a huge payday, but no one's going to want to sign him for six or seven years and guarantee that huge payday. A-Rod got the huge payday for the Yankees, and now that he's over, like I think he's 39 now, but they're going to be paying him $25 million a season until he's 41. Um, and, and so, yeah, but, but, but that's where it's at. So, no, I mean, a guy's prime is usually about 26, 27 to about 33, 34. Okay. Uh, and then, like, there are guys that were able to play into their 40s and stuff, but your body just starts to fall. Clemens. Clemens. Fall apart. Clemens. Clemens. Well, Clemens was right it up. Like, that's why he could pitch that long. Or there, did he there, come back last year? Uh, he, he talked about trying to. He pitched in a couple independent league uh, games down well. in Texas. No, no, no. I mean, he's lost a lot of velocity. He was still looking good against those guys, but I just think he's past his moment. Um, um, but there have been guys in baseball in the past that, I mean, who knows if Nolan Ryan used steroids, I don't know. But, like, Nolan Ryan pitched into his late 40s, but he was also just a giant hunk of muscle built to throw a fastball. So <laughs> maybe he could do it that long. Um, my only other thing, it's not on the podcast, but those end up, but I... I'm a big, big, big fan of UFC and MMA. Yeah, yeah. And recently, you might not know this, not being a huge fan, yeah. they had their first women's fight, hmm. which is interesting, you know? Yeah. Um, it was this girl named Ronda Rousey, who is uh, an Olympic judo gold medalist, mm -hmm. versus this girl named Liz Carmouche, who also set the first uh, openly gay UFC fighter. Very cool. So, And then this goes back to about five years ago, you might be familiar with where Dana White said the other F word. Oh, in, yeah. a, in yeah, an interview, yeah. which you're familiar with? Yeah, yeah. I've and heard of the other F word uh, discussing uh, LBGT people, I'm assuming. Yes. Yeah. Um, and he's, he said it was, a, it was a dumb statement I made, and I regret it. It's the only regret I've made in this company, mm -hmm. which shows that he's in a story or yeah, a story that he got caught. Well, here's, no, but here's the thing. He acknowledged it. He apologized. I'm okay with that. Yeah. So, but it was a huge thing. You know, mm -hmm. she got CNN press. It was the biggest card this year so far. Yeah. So yeah, just want to throw that. That's awesome. There was, yeah. a, there was a fight last weekend. It was or two weekends ago. It was lights out. Yeah. It was one of the biggest brawls I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. There was a there was a fight this weekend. Nice. So they're awesome. I like women's fight in the UFC. And I mean, my thing is like there was a big deal around women's boxing when it, it started to take off. And Who the was only the problem girl? was Layla Ali, Muhammad no, no, Ali's daughter, was, is great. Um, 
the other one. Female boxer. Um, she was. Snake Ali retired like unbeaten. Yeah, no, there's, there's one. She was openly gay at the end of her career. She was trained, or she was trained by her husband. Oh, I don't he know. He was crazy. Um, there's ESPN East 40 on it, or E60. I'm um, not sure, dude. I'll find the name of it. I'll bring it back after we're coming up on break time anyway. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we're gonna leave you with a song. It's NJC said. Enjoy it, people. Yeah, it's uh, first single off the album Black, and uh, yeah, it's a Jackson Five sample. It's called She Said. You can buy it on iTunes probably next week. So we'll see you in a bit. Whoop whoop. Conversations with her all day Sooner or later it was bound to go the wrong way That's the story, sit back and let the song play She was a popular girl, a little cheerleader Body hotter than the weather down in Costa Rica But deep down in her heart she was a daydreamer She didn't know what love was, not a believer She was caught up with assholes and drug dealers Tried them out higher than leaders hitting the gas meter She started feeling like a stick in the mud Her best friend told her all that she was missing was love And him, he was a little rough around the edges Dressed kinda like he was living in 87 He was a kid with big dreams in his head And he wished for them every night at 11, 11 Wasn't a prep or a nerd or a jock He branded his own style, working days around the clock Making music, hoping one day he could make it to the top And his lonely cold heart, he started making her a spot uh. In the city that shines But all he ever really wanted Was his heart inside To feel vibrant Like he was finally alive But he was searching so long Like he never could find The right girl He was a hopeless romantic And after every show All the ladies would panic But he didn't want Anything to do with the annex Those girls only fuck With his mind and cause damage So the boy and the girl Got together at last The girl close every day That would pass Kisses in the hallway Every day he would walk Into class And every check that he got He would split it in half She called him every night before she went to sleep And she supported all his dreams that he would never achieve When they touched it was like the whole world was off Like nothing else mattered and the words were lost And every night he would send her a really long message Telling her that he loved her and how she always made him breathless They both did anything that they could to make it work But it's sad how it just never could Oh baby give me one more chance Give me one more chance it's like With sunshine and rainbows But everybody knows there's only rainbows for the raindrops They were stuck outside with no raincoats Over time the rain became tornadoes uh-huh. It was hard trying to battle the weather And every day they came closer to the end of their efforts Shit. They couldn't keep it on the surface forever Though everybody thought the two were truly perfect together Whatever Finally they broke the pressure Decided if they went their separate ways They both would be better yeah. To her the breakup was another endeavor And at the same time it showed him that life's an adventure Damn Cause what happens when the ecstasy stalls Trying hard to remember moments she never recalls Over time she would eventually fall They say when you're at the lowest point in your life Your destiny calls True Cause when he was picking flowers with a subtle smile She was on the internet looking for another guy And then she realized she was out of time Cause she threw it all away and she'll never know why Hello and welcome back to the Stove Show. Brett, Brett. Can we 
stop with the. No, I no. love that. Never change. The yeah. Yeah. Into them. Why? Uh, they're just. So this negative. Isn't hate. We don't have a segment called Hate Stove, do we? <laughs> Maybe we should. I'm Nick, and I don't like your brapping. <laughs> <laughs> It's politically, women. it's You're politically incorrect. Systems. How is me going brap brap politically incorrect? It's promoting gun violence or snowballed wheels. I, I was gonna say, well, the other way I would go is that there's an irony to it when Stove does it. Stove <laughs> is not your typical gangland assassin type fella. Or a snowmobiler. <laughs> oh. Alrighty, um, we have a new segment. Whoop, whoop. On the stove show, we have uh, Wu Tang Weekly. We love the Wu Tang Clan on here on the stove show, and you know, with this being the twentieth anniversary, November third, nineteen ninety three, and it's not ni- November third, nineteen ninety three. I'm gonna clarify this. We're coming up. We're coming up on the twentieth anniversary of the thirty six chambers. Oh. Uh, I want to say real quick before we jump into this segment. Uh, did either of you guys catch their Coachella performance? No, I, I did. I, didn't I did. Have it a was amazing. To, yeah. It was a surprise performance. Wu Tang was not supposed to be there, so the crowd is just sitting in the audience, and all of a sudden that would be the you, right place for the crowd to sit. All but of anyway, continue. all of uh, it, they were just you know they had no clue what was going on. They were just sitting a, on the stage. Anyways, in, 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 <laughs> security between, would probably get pissed off. Anyway, continue. In between acts, yeah. um, uh, there was you know there was like a they were right after a jazz act or something, and the. the, the Stage is all black and everybody's just kind of you know like looking around or whatever. And all of a sudden, you see the W. The RZA standing on this high platform with his back to the crowd, and nobody no nobody can see him. Nobody knows who he is yet. And then the W comes up on the screen, and you just hear the crowd. Is it roar. on YouTube or is it on? Yeah, they have all. They had a Jurassic Five set. Yeah, they had a Jurassic Five set there. Fuck, was it good? Oh yeah. Oh. Like this, the, the the other set they had on there was uh, Red Hot Chili. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that was a good set. I want to go I, Coachella. Like the the Wu Tang was about an hour and forty minutes. Oh really? And yeah, uh, Red Man made a special appearance. With I actually, Meth. I heard he and Meth are doing another album. Do you want it? Yeah. Do you want? Okay, so they played. Was it nine out of the eleven songs? Yeah, off of the six chambers. chambers. I think the only ones they didn't do was the intro. Yeah, the, the, like the two well, mid. The, the, well, and the the intro is predominantly dirty, right? Yeah, but like here's it's just the him thing. rapping over, they did, talking for, over. And for over that, they used Master Killer. Master Killer did really? all the dirty, oh, and nice. he did a pretty decent job yeah. of all of it. Um, and then they did Shimmy Shimmy Ya in Brooklyn Zoo with Master doing all the all the old dirty old part. stuff nice and then they did rock they ended up with like the rock wilder yeah and they had a big huge rest in peace odb thing nice. and yeah it was great Dude, it I'll was check it out I'll yeah check it, it out is online. definitely and the jurassic five set was a thick yeah and then yeah then, a huge dra- i mean I, I like them but i'll check them out bring yeah. it back to the concrete be- concrete streets original beats with real live mcs playground tactics no rabbit in a hat tricks <laughs> just that rap shit from jurassic and yeah Right now, the guys from Jurassic 5 are in the world somewhere, and, and they just kind of looked around like, something wrong just happened. <laughs> I feel like I've been violated in a way I've never been violated before. Oh, there's there's W coming back. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, well, why, why would ever you impersonate somebody W? It's just somebody. W's in my mind. It's, they open... You even say W like W. <laughs> w. It's why Reds do you George hate w. George W. But it's not so much a hatred. It's just more he's back in the news again. It's because he built his new library down in the States. They opened it yesterday, I think. How <laughs> ironic is it to go yes. read a book at the George W. Bush <laughs> library? <laughs> I don't know about, like, we were watching The Daily Show today, and, and he was kind of making fun of it. And like, there's 43 or 43,000 pieces of memorabilia from his time as president. And so they had like one. One was the pair of boots the Texas Rangers gave him when they won the American League Championship Series. Wow. Um, and and it is. It's set up in little. It looks like the Hard Rock Cafe. I've been to Cleveland. I've seen the Hard. Or sorry, sorry. I've seen the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah. But but John the Stewart, George Bush Hall of Fame. But but it, and and Did then. Nah, but they have there. this they have these interactive computers apparently where it's like choose your own adventure so they they give you all the information they say hey would you invade Iraq and if you say no then he comes on and explains why you're wrong and that it was still a good idea like it, it's just weird that's awesome and what well, and I mean it, it's a little quick to get your library out there because like he did some questionable stuff we'll say and wow well, well. That he had, oh, sorry, that, and, and then the one that kills me is that you walk into the place, 
and there's a chunk of the Twin Towers where one of the pieces of metal, the plane, that's like the centerpiece as you walk into the library. Is a piece of the plane. No, no, it's a piece of the iron from the building that the plane actually struck. It's like contact metal. So it, it was one of the girders that one of the planes actually flew into that they found in the wreckage and analyzed it and said, yeah, the plane actually hit this thing. And he's like, well, I'm going to put this in my library. <laughs> And, I love and, the and, George W. Bush impression. And, and, but that was his, like, that, that was, that's what you see when you walk in. And again, as we've gotten further away from that, like, the, the intelligence community was warning. It was like, yeah, hey, attack's coming. There's a, a memo that he saw on September 7th or something that said, no, this is for real, something's coming. And, and I'm not suggesting conspiracy or anything. It's just, you know, you get those messages all the time, and they didn't act on it. But it, it's a weird thing to make the centerpiece of your library. Well... Anyways, Let's probably get off the subject. Yeah, W. W is not on the Wu Tang Clan. But uh, the W. The W. The w, w. <laughs> w. I love how you said W. The W. The W. D so U B Y A. Our question. W. Our question this week for Wu Tang Weekly. Yes. And listeners, comment. Please send suggestions. Yeah. yeah. What job, outside of being a hip hop artist, would each Wu Tang member have? Ooh. So here's my. I'll start off. I think ODB. Would be um, the com- oh, what, who's for, like um, the maitre d at an old dirty Chinese restaurant. You're stealing a Dave Chappelle joke, right? Yes, I am. Um, oh yeah, the racial draft. Right? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I love. It. I, here's the thing for me. I think ODB would have surprised everyone if, if he had stayed main. Like if he hadn't got into hip hop, I see him as like a veterinarian. <laughs> like I see him healing sick puppies. I is he still on like. Drugs at the time? Or oh, yeah, yeah. Like, he's uh, high as shit. But, but so, he's just so basically, healing So basically, healing this, is a new, this is a new AMC series. The Black Gangster Who is a Drug Addict Veterinarian. Okay, we gotta start writing a script. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> who cool. just happens to be ODB. Yeah, we'll just Can we get the guy who's gonna play ODB in his Oh, no, we should, we should get Ja Rule. I heard he's not busy, so... <laughs> oh, my he kind of sound like You him. heard he he's not sounds. busy. From whom? Exactly. No one. That's why, that's why I know Ja Rule's not busy. I haven't heard his name since 2001. And even then, it was someone... <laughs> even then, it was someone making fun of him, I think. That wasn't my scream metal okay. impression. That okay, was... so that's ODB. So who do we got next over? Okay, the Jizza. The Jizza. The genius. See, I think going by him, the genius... I think he might have been like a scholar, maybe like a historian, for me, a I, professor of sorts. I, I think a high school teacher. Actually, that's not. I could see the jizz. A, a grade, a grade nine teacher. Okay, because maybe social studies. For me, when I think the jizz, because he also mixes the beats, right? I see him doing like scientific research. I see him in a lab with a white coat. So maybe and a bunch of test tubes with different. So maybe a high school liquids. chemistry teacher. Could be a high school chemistry teacher. I'd see him a little higher up, like you know, he, he'd be curing cancer or something. <laughs> he's the jizz. He, he's on the. So basically, he's a genius. So basically, genius. out of the two we've done so far, two of them are like the most extreme forms of no. education well, let's, let's you can be real. honestly I think ODB would have been like the greatest hot dog cart vendor <laughs> in, in downtown no New that's York. Raekwon oh, oh Ray, the, the chef the master chef the, the yes chef. Yeah, so exactly. going by his name he would be like a food studies teacher no no he wouldn't be a teacher oh, he would just be what? a salesman he would be like black Mario Batali you know <laughs> but, but he would but he'd do it for like soul food I could see like a food network show and it's Raekwon just touring the South, making great soul so food So he's with the people. black Guy Fieri? Yeah, or, 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 oh, no, oh, not oh. Guy Fieri. Let's say the black Tony Bourdain. He travels all over the world okay. and, and cooks mm. and eats great soul food. I okay, could, I could that, 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 that. that would be dope. Um, okay, the I want to say, I wanna say, well, before we hop into the RZA, because that's going to be a difficult a one, one, I, I want to say Inspected Deck is got some kind of law enforcement. <laughs> SWAT team. <laughs> Like no, no no like no, like, like a secret lame, agent like, like for a, the FBI like a, oh, but like but okay. like a desk like a desk guy for the FBI. So he, so he, he walks around and I work for the FBI but really he's just like okay. a secretary. So how about, <laughs> <laughs> how about Okay, do you guys watch Archer at all? Yes. Okay. No. Uh, Cyril Figus on Archer. The comptroller like yeah. He, yeah like he's in charge of the books. He's the accountant. He, he's the accountant. <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah. And also like analyze like uh, or uh, what do you call him? Steve Carell at the start of Get Smart. Yeah. yeah. He's listening in on the conversations about soup and stuff in Belarus. Yeah. I, I could see Inspector Deck doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Because he, um, he's an Inspector. Master Killer. Master Killer. That's a tough one. 
I mean, I'm trying to just think of it of his style. And I feel like preacher, maybe. No, I think it's a televangelist. No, he. I think maybe. Maybe he owns a daycare. <laughs> <laughs> Master Killer's Master. Daycare. Yeah, you might want to change the name for branding purposes, but I like that. That that would work for me. I could see. I could see the. Yeah. Wow. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. for me, the the easiest one in the world, just with his voice, Method Man has to have like a lame ass morning radio show. Oh. Right, like yeah. in the, in oh, the I, New I York was gonna area. Say, no, I wasn't gonna say New York area. I was gonna say he would be a spoken word radio host on in NPR. London. On, on in London on NPR. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I could see that. He'd Hello, be, my name is. Oh, and he would. He'd just be high as shit. No, I know, I know. Like, he not... would. He would be high when he did that. Yeah. Math. All I can see is the character from How High, <laughs> but dressed up as like this very intelligent British dude talking on British equivalent of NPR. I could see that. Yeah. Um, who do we have left? Uh, what do you think for Stove? Or the Stover, what? what do you think for uh, Method Man? Man, like... Either that or I could see him being like the doorman at a really cool club, you know? I don't know. He's, no. He's going to be the guy that stands in front of like hotels and like, like and, a doorman, uh, like a bellboy, no. a valet, a valet. That's oh. what you got is. <laughs> you, you got, got is the you valet. Got is a valet. <laughs> and he's the dude from Ferris Bueller that'll steal your car and go yeah. on a mad road trip. Yeah, yeah definitely. I can see that. Um, yeah. Man, Matt could be like the, an usher at a theater. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I can see that. I feel like mm, just high as shit throughout all every yeah. movie. <laughs> showing showing wealthy white people to their seats at the Metropolitan Opera or something. Yeah, I feel that, like there is a would be like a marriage minister. Oh, like a counselor. Do you know what? No, like a guy who actually marries people. Oh, okay. okay. Like a justice a, of the peace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He's a like for me, I could see him being like an analyst or a psychologist because you got to think like he he ran the show for those guys, right? And those are pretty big personalities that you're. I could see him doing like marriage counseling or family counseling yeah. or something. Oh like my that. gosh, a children's social worker. <laughs> I, you know, I can see the RZA being good at that. Yeah, no, I could. Maybe like the RZA could be like. Do you know the, those guys that you just see like walking around and you don't really know what job they do? Like, did they do odd jobs around the city? Oh, okay. So he'd just be, like, a random handyman? Yeah. So, so in your like mind... Like a carpenter. The, the Rizzo would be, like... He's kind of like Bruce Banner in The Incredible Hulk. He just wanders around the city and fixes people's problems. Yeah. Like, the Rizzo blows into town and be like, I'll solve that. <laughs> yes. For the record, that's what the Rizzo sounds like. He's like, hey, I'll fix that for you. He's an old white guy. Um, Who's the last one? That's Who, everyone. Uh, Ghostface. Yeah. Oh, Ghostface Kill. Okay, Ghost we talked to Ghost sorry, yeah. I, oh, I said he'd be an angry garbage man who just hates his job. Yeah. Pissed yeah. off angry garbage man. I could see that. Yeah. Um, with, his, with his really high pitched voice. And he just he messes with people while he does his garbage job though. Like he, he tries to Oh, I don't know. He just tries to fuck with people. Okay, so basically as he's throwing the bag in the garbage, he's like open it and going, you know, sit, looking through people's Garbage finding their dirty mailman. Yeah. He's the mailman that has sex with all the. Oh, <laughs> he's a male maid. No, no, <laughs> ghost. No, Ghostface is on. We don't want to do that. Ghostface, go. I, I can, I can see what it is. Is I can. I'm with you. I can see him in the blue coveralls, but the, just the, talking shit to everyone on his run. So right? maybe he's like a foreman. Could be construction foreman. We have to pull that off. I'm trying to think, what else could? Oh, I had another one for him. For some reason, I saw him working at a fish market. Like I just saw a fishmonger. Yeah, I just saw him throwing fish. (laughs) And then, like you said, just pissed off about it. (laughs) Stupid (laughs) fish, just tossing fish over. And I guess it's more fish, right? That's that's, that's where it got into my head. Maybe he's a New Brunswick fisherman. There you go. Although there's no fish left over there. What? Thanks. Twenty years ago. So we would have been whatever. Okay. Alrighty. Um, I have. What Nick described as the worst ad we've gotten. For Craigslist? Yes, for Craigslist. This cannot be worse than the guy that was offering snowballing services for No, Polo it's worse. Shield. It's, it's worse. worse. It's worse. It... All right, here we go. Okay, so um, I'm going to just open it. This is the guy's ass that he posted. Oh, wow. Okay. That's a that's a naked white bottom for the, f- for the listeners at home. Okay. Boys, 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 and their daddies. Male for male. Capital letters? Like, he's, is he yelling this? Yes. Wow. And their daddies, male for male, 46. 
Boys need someone older to mentor them and teach them the art of a hot man-on-man sex. I'm a discreet and caring daddy that lives by himself and know how to treat a young man with respect and dignity (laughs) he is due. When a young man first begins to think about the desire, the touch of a man, he has so many questions and watching porn on the computer is just going to tell you so much. I will take you the time to... (laughs) I love that he suggests that that's the best place to start. Start here, but you can only learn so much here. If you want to get into the postgraduate work of this field, well, talk to me. I will take you, I'll take the time to tutor you and never rush you into something you are not ready for. Oral, rimming, fucking, making out, in brackets, (laughs) kissing, etc. And the age-old question of condom or bareback Uh, are just some of the things that you need to know about it. About... To make an informed decision on all things man on man. I am not a dirty old man that just really wants to get in the pants of young men. The second when you- I really do care about all the well being of all younger men in need of mentoring does not even need to include sex. If all you want to do is talk, that is fine with me. <laughs> the look on the old Reg's face. Well, no, guys, you have to realize you are two 16 year old guys sitting at a table with a 36 year old guy. This is very creepy to hear you reading that stuff. <laughs> hey, young men need mentors and people to hang out with. We can rim, you know. Uh. Um, okay, the one thing I love in there, to me, that Whoa. statement. I'm not a dirty old man just looking to get in the pants of young men. Yeah, 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 yeah. fucking (laughs) are. The second you include that sentence, that's like anyone that starts a sentence with, well, I don't want to be racist, but... Uh, You know what I mean? Probably going to be racist. You you say those things because you're about to... No offense. The second you say no offense, you're about to say some rude stuff to that person, right? Um, But yeah, I'm not just a dirty old... The second you take the time to write that, yes, you are. Yeah. Um, so yeah, thoughts, gentlemen? I, were either of you tempted to give this man a call? And I mean, obviously nothing sexual or anything, but just to get his mentorship and life experience talking. I'm not interested in having man on, hot man-on-man sex like you described. That's true. I, I don't need But still, ha- the ad says that you don't have to do that. I have a funny feeling he might coax you into it. <laughs> oh, so he's just trying to talk you into the house to... yeah. He's trying to talk you in the house, and then he wants to show you how to lick his bum hole. <laughs> oh, stove. Anyway. No, that is, that is what he's offering. That is what he's offering. That was on the list. Yeah, I mean, again, oh, Craigslist, why do we do this? Like, <laughs> just, every week, I, I, I seem to surprise you guys. Well, it's just that every week my soul dies a little bit. Because <laughs> I think of some 16-year-old guy, young, you know, he's just realizing, you know, he's accepting 18, who he is. That he's, kind of like 18. Oh, okay, it's got to be 18. But anyways, but, but point. accepting who he is, that he's gay and uncertain. And now, obviously, this is a pretty ham-fisted attempt to sound like a thoughtful, caring, <laughs> mentor-type relationship. But, yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, but here's the thing. Actually, here's a better way to say it. This dude is looking to prey upon, yeah. You know, genuinely uncertain young men, and and that's that's troubling to me. That and, yeah. And anytime your profile pic is your bare ass, <laughs> it's your, hard to then, and your it, balls. It's, it's hard to play the gen. Yeah, I was trying to it's, block those out of my it, memory. It, so. It's hard to it's hard to say I'm not a dirty yeah, old yeah. man. I'm a gentleman. That's why my profile picture is a big white ass. <laughs> <laughs> that's the thing. If you so now, why are you looking at it more? <laughs> well, and showing it to us again. Yes, thank you. Steve. We get it, Stove. Um, yeah. That's that's the ad for this week. Anyone interested, contact the guy. So next for, segment, please. No, what? for the for the record, guys, that's how the podcast got started. I was like, hey fellas, we can all get together in Nick's basement and we can talk into a microphone. Uh, that's really sexy microphone. That's, talk. Really, that's really not what happened. Ugh, I felt dirty just I saying love that. Sexy microphone. Like, okay. So let's go back to like Ghostface Killer <laughs> pissing off the people at his garbage room. Actually, Nick, I have... Nick's looking a little stunned right now. You all right there, Nickers? I don't even know what to say. We we become better. Um, now every couple weeks we decide to talk about what we've been watching, playing, um, listening to. This one's gonna be rough because it's been so long. <laughs> so been let's, long I'm gonna, let's speed run it, okay? We'll talk. We have a discussion for important parts. Yeah. And we'll all go through all three. Okay. Okay. So I've been listening to the new Soul Members album, a beautiful dark, uh, beautiful, 
Death Machine. It's really good. Um, I've been listening to the Dropkick Murphys album. Love the Murphys. Yeah, love the Murphys. Um, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Alanis Morissette with uh, Little Jagged Pill. I've been listening to the best of DMX. <laughs> um, I love, I love that. I was about to make I a joke. That. What is it? Seven songs? Yeah, like, yeah, he, he's yeah. got a lot of good tracks. I love yeah, how I like the DMX. best of DMX. Like, where's the best of NJ? Like, it's about it's like the same. <laughs> no, uh, DMX. He was around a long time. The yeah. only problem is he was so repetitive in a lot of ways. Yeah, no, I, I see his writing, his writing a lot. But, and actually, you were saying this earlier still, was that listening to his best of, you, you get some of the softer tracks and you see another side of them. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Um, The other... Keep, every time I hear him do a love song, I keep waiting for him to go, Bitch, I'll kill you! <laughs> you know, or something like that. Um, I've been watching, I just finished the Chappelle show. Yeah, brilliant. All right. 28 episodes. Now, anyone watching, thinking about watching the Chappelle show, watch the first 25 episodes. Yeah. The last three would never make it in another season of The Chappelle Show. The only reason you might watch it is because Charlie Murphy and Danielle Rawlings are kind of funny. Yeah. They're, they're actually pretty good. Um, the one for me with Chappelle was the early episodes of the musical acts that he got on there. Yeah. Like, they're, like, um... Kanye. Know, Kanye West and Common and Freeway do... Oh, no, wait. Most Def and Freeway do a track together. Yeah. That's Black great. Star. Two words. Um, yeah. Um, the one that, I, that kills me every time, I think it's the second or third episode... It's Dave Chappelle sitting with Mostef in the car, and they've just got the beat playing on yeah. the stereo. And he's, like, rapping as they're driving around New York. Uh, blew my mind. And, I mean, I'm not sure if they ran the track and he was just mouthing it while they shot it or whatever, but, yeah, that is crazy. Or um, in, when they had Wyclef John. Yeah. I like Wyclef John. Oh, yeah, because, yeah. Uh, yeah, he plays uh, if, if I Were President. Yeah. And he does the great cameo on Mad Real World. Or, or, sorry, no, Making the Band. That's yeah, what he does. or so. Snoop. Dylon. Or Snoop playing... Uh, Oh, and Char- in, in Knee High Park too, his voice for yeah. the dangle the character. Yeah. I gotta, I gotta interject. Yes, Snoop Lions. Oh new, yeah, new single. Um, check new- it out. Vice made that documentary. Uh, just his new single with Miley Cyrus. Heartbreaks and Ashtrays. Yeah, it's badass. I, I know, and like that's the thing. Everything I've heard <laughs> about his his reggae album is that no, it's actually really it's good. It's really Give good. It a listen. I saw a really funny picture on the internet today, and it was a picture of Snoop Dogg in 1993, and oh. it was a picture of him sings about killing cops. Oh yeah. And then it's like after 20 years of smoking weed, and it's a picture of him all happy. <laughs> it's like sing, sings about peace. Well, and, and the funny thing about Snoop Dogg is, I mean, more so than anyone, he got on that whole branding thing, and he was able to rebrand himself a ton of different ways. Like, he, he came out, like you said. He was deep, a pimp. Yeah, well, Deep Cover, uh, that the Lawrence Fishburne movie, he and Dre did a song together for that, uh, 187. Um, and that was the first time anyone had ever heard of Snoop Dogg. And then The Chronic came out like shortly after that and turned Snoop into a superstar and then Doggy Style. And, but so he was hardcore gangster rap. And then that kind of went out of fashion. So then he switched it up a bit. Um, you know, when Pharrell was doing the real toned down rap, well, yeah. he jumped on that. Yeah. Um, and then for a while, he just made some really shitty stuff. Oh, with like, Katy Perry yeah, and stuff. Yeah, all, all of the featuring stuff that he did. But again, that's what was popular at the time. I really think he's just a guy that can kind of read adapt where music's and, at yeah. and adapt. But like I said, everything I've read about his album is, is that it's really good. Yeah. I'm going to have to give it a listen, man. Um, Sorry, I didn't the mean to say that. Yeah, uh, that's the only thing I've else looked at is uh i have this game def jam rap star oh my gosh have you seen any of these <laughs> I have. oh no i do yeah the, the youtube stuff you've yeah. been doing yeah it's fun yeah nick hates it i might have more views than nick i think i feel as though if you're gonna do that and then you know your people are making fun of you for it and i'm not like fuck them yeah who cares but see but seriously if you're gonna do that you're asking for it, well, I, and I'm I'm saying I'm I'm not saying it matters. Like fuck them, like I, I don't care. You're not taking yourself seriously, so why should you take it seriously when people make fun of you for well, it? And to me, Nick, too, it, it's just you guys are both young guys. You both look to want to be involved in entertainment in some capacity. To be a musician and a performer, your image and what goes out there is, is really really important. Yeah. Stowe's goal is to get into stand up and be a comedian, right? Yeah. Yeah. And and so like it's it's a hard job. Um. Like, like um, comedy comes from pain. It really does. Um, Louis C.K., when, when he talks about... When, when he gets up and does stand-up, 
he's not talking about the awesome, wonderful, beautiful moments of life. You can tell this is a big, goofy-looking white guy, and there's some self-loathing there that comes through in his character. So when, when Stove goes on YouTube, and like you said, a lot of people are just making fun of you. Who gives a shit? Yeah. Well, I don't even care. Like People Did, are trying to make fun of me. I'm like, do you? I don't know if you guys realize, I'm a 16-year-old from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, rapping a notorious B.I.G. song using Def Jam Rap Star. I don't care. Well, and, and the whole point is, like, that's the joke of it, right? Yeah. You're not trying to, to get out there as a rapper and, and be the next Biggie Smalls. No. Nope. You're you're a chubby white kid having fun rapping on YouTube. Who gives uh, a shit? Wait, yeah, or, like, me, my best one, in my opinion, is that I took money, Monopoly money. Oh, yeah, for Make It Rain or something? Like I get that. money by 50 that's Cent, and I, I just threw money at the camera. Oh, my God. But again, like, but it, what I like is that there's a comedy there. There's a comment to it. Oh no, I think it's funny. I think that, it's hilarious. Well, and you're poke, but you're poking fun at how ridiculous. Like even now, make it rain and all of that. You know, like oh, and, and racks on racks on racks and that. Joe, shit. Joe said it's that. It's such a joke. Joe it's, said that they were sitting down in an interview, and uh, it's the slaughterhouse guys, and these are all grown men, yeah. and 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 they're they're way past the whole money thing and whatever. And uh, I think it was or at, Joe. Least, at least bragging about it oh, in the yeah. music. They got yeah. something else to say. I think I think I think it was Joe or Crooked Eye. He said, "Is there is there a minimum requirement for making it rain?" He's like, "Because I've gone to the strip clubs with some of these younger artists who talk about making it rain, and they're throwing one dollar bills at strippers." He's like, "That's not making it rain. That's throwing one dollar bills at strippers." <laughs> that's, called, that's called being a guy at a strip club. <laughs> you know, you're you're not. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. Because they had a whole strip club conversation, and they were like, "Who who out of you four is most likely to go to the strip club and buy food. And they kind of looked around and they're like, you mean like buy only food and then leave? And yeah, then Joe puts up his hat. Yeah. He's like, your boy. He's like, I, that, that's like, he's like, well, all my other friends go. I'm gonna, I'm the guy sitting at the bar okay. eating those strip club wings. Well, that's the thing. I got to give you a peek behind the curtain. My, the, the, my wife's, the guy, she only dated really one other guy in her life before we got together. Um, and they were together for like four years, but he loved strip clubs. And I'm like, so you go to the, and like my wife's like a hardcore feminist, man. That's not her thing. <laughs> and I'm like, so you go to the strip club with them? And she's like, yeah, strip clubs have great food. Oh, that's what they were saying. And, like... I'd, and I'd be like, and, and like, I mean, obviously I've, I've been to strip clubs. I, it, they were really, really cool for about six months when I turned 18. <laughs> and after going three or four times in six months when I turned 18, Does I'm like. Does it feel just dirty? Like it just feels just like I mean, that's like, somebody's mm-hmm. daughter. Well, and it's it's not so much. I mean, it's just so belittling the way we do it in Canada too, because there's guys lined up at the edges like throwing change at their privates, and it's just it, it's not done right. Now, um, the one place I went to in Edmonton, it was more of a gentleman's club. Yeah, uh, they didn't go full nude. Like uh, like mm-hmm. for me, the most interesting part of the whole show is when they're doing pole tricks and stuff, just wearing a bikini. It's attractive. You don't see everything. They're showing off some athleticism. But yeah, it, it's just one of those things that I never got a taste for. But every single strip club I have ever been to where I had food, yeah. the food is great. And, and and again, my feminist wife said, "Oh yeah, I just kind of turned so I didn't really have to watch the women." And, and she likes the pole tricks too and stuff. So she's like, yeah. "I watched that bit." But as soon as they got fully naked, I was eating wings or eating whatever it was. Um, so um, yeah. So what Nick, what have you been watching, listening, or playing? Listening. Um, Blue and Exile's album. Uh, it's called "Give Me, Give Me My Flowers While I Can Still Smell Them." Um, it's a really good album. It's clever. Uh, there's a song called on it called "A Man," uh, and is that the dude it, from Toronto? Or? Uh, no, he's from New York. New York, okay. Yeah, and uh, there's a song called "A Man," and it's a uh, it's a play on words because uh, it's "A Man," but it's like "Amen,", Amen. Uh, and it's about how religion is dumb and you shouldn't follow it's not about really how religion is done but it's about how you shouldn't just follow a man you should mm. not just follow jesus or whatever because religion is so much bigger than that and it's a really good song uh be, um so kind of the, the play between organized religion and faith yeah. which are you know different creatures yeah right? um so i've been listening to a lot of him um city real and west Mackey, that album that i'm yeah, lending actually, rich I, I dug that stuff again like i said it reminded me a lot of a3 yeah yeah a3. so it's like basically it's like a mixture of like rap and Blues, blues with a little bit of techno mixed yeah. into the backbeats. It's yeah. pretty cool. Uh, yeah, at least so, electronica. I guess. Yeah, yeah. So that's cool. Um, oh boy, uh, the weekend. Nice. I've been listening to a lot of the weekend. Um, my girlfriend actually picked me up the uh, the trilogy, uh, which is like their album 
and it's not even really an album. It's uh, it's their three um, EPs okay. all mixed oh, together. Nice. So it's like three six track EPs all together as one album. Uh, so I've been listening to a lot of that. Asher Roth, which hate him if you want, but he's a good lyricist. He, I mean, he's a, a solid writer. Yeah. Um, he's kind of one note in his flow. Yeah. Um, yeah. My my buddy, uh, shout out to Data Banks. Uh, Data Banks. Whoop, whoop. His, whoop, his, whoop. his Roy Meets World uh, mixtape came out last Friday, yeah. and it blew me away. There's a track on there called Bring Boots, yeah. and it's it's phenomenal. Um, Is it called Arms or what? Hmm? Is it called Arms or no? It, it no, it's about it's just about his life. Okay, it's I was just, just thinking of like a revolution song. Yeah, of course I was thinking Boots Riley. Yeah, um, love the coup. Uh, I don't know a lot of Joel so, Ortiz, so, so, free agent. Yeah, Street Sweeper. So the, <laughs> um, the coup stuff's way better than that. Though. I haven't checked that. Yeah. You know what else I've been listening to? Uh, Logic. A lot of Logic. Uh, we I, live as kings. I downloaded his album. I haven't really been listening to a lot of W L A K. That was early on this past. But that's month. good. Like. That that's that's since the last time we've met W L A K uh, and uh, notes to self these guys from Toronto that I've been listening to a bunch. Um, also, mixed blood majority, really good. Uh, I checked out their album; it was really good. So yeah, I've been listening to a lot of music lately. Just basically anything anybody will throw at me, I've been popping in the stereo. And, um, but yeah, uh, other than that, uh, what have I been watching? A shitload of Breaking Bad. Nice. I have watched almost every single episode in the past two weeks. So. Uh, that's like I do about four or five episodes a night. I lost so. track of it. I watched the first season and a half, and then there was a scene with him and his wife in the kitchen. Oh yeah, season two. You know what I'm talking. Yeah. Spoiler. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm not gonna say anything out loud for the folks that haven't seen it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it was so off-putting, and he's it's it's such an anti-hero character with Walter. Oh, I know. Like, cause as I'm watching it, they in the start they really set you up to cheer for him. And so when he starts to go downhill, it hurts. So I've already talked to the web. We're, we're going to go back through it again. We, we've got it's, all the DVDs. Um, I'm going to have to watch it all because it, apparently it's just that good. But what I what like, I have to say. Gut wrenching show. What, what I have to say. Oh, it, it's sad. Yeah. It's There's really sad moments later on. But uh, what I have to say is you do, you do start off the show really cheering for Walter. But he does a lot of dumb shit just because. Well, and it's, it, it's a guy in a world that he doesn't understand. And uh, stressed And I, lo- and I the love that out. element of it. Um, but you almost start to go, here's Walter being an asshole again, yeah. and here's Jesse suffering for Walter being an asshole. And well, and they really play that flip well because yeah. at the start, Walter's the brains, Jesse's an idiot, and well, I mean, I'm on the, the format, I'm, though, I'm right? almost on the fourth season right now, and by the fourth season, um, sorry, really spoiler spoiler alert, but I'm just saying Jesse becomes. I, I'm, I don't know, he, he comes like completely clean off of all of his drugs and everything, and he, he just becomes a different person. His uh, his parents, uh, have you got that far yet? No, dude, I told you, halfway through season two. Yeah, so, so thanks I, I for ruining the end of season four for me, a D-bag. Oh, no, I'm just saying, he's, I'm he's, totally a, kidding. he's a better guy, but his parents, um, they renovate and they, they're trying to sell their house. Okay. So he has all this money, and he goes and he buys the house from his parents, and he shows up. And they're like, oh, Jesse, what are you doing here? We're selling the house. You can't go in there. And he has the keys. Mm-hmm. And he just tells them to fuck off because they kicked him out of the house. So, but yeah, uh, it's crazy, but it's really sad. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't, what else do I watch? I watch Red Dawn. The new one? The new one. How is it? Awesome. Really? I thought, I looked at it. If and I, because you said Quarantine 2 was great. And it was, it was okay for the money they had, but it was pretty hurting them. Though he did say Spring Breakers is the worst movie he's seen this year. I oh seen it. my it Atlanta! That movie is <laughs> terrible. Haley and I went and saw it in Galaxy, and she fell asleep in my arms, and I was just. I need. I got a groupie. <laughs> yeah, she you know fell asleep in my arms. Yeah. Right. We had to get one more in. It, it was a bad thing because my arm fell asleep and I was just laying there oh. like, this is bullshit. <laughs> so, hate in the world watching stupid shitty movie. Yeah. Now my arm's asleep and she's the one who wants to So it's got anyway. James Franco is this creepy pimp guy. Nice. Uh, I like Franco. I don't care. Oh, no, I, I like him too, but he's this freaky, weird pimp rapper. Really? Yeah. And he's like some completely loser drug dealer. And he doesn't really pull it off if, if the movie. No, he does. Bad. He is he, the, only the only good only part good of the thing movie. in the movie. So you got Vanessa Hudgens, oh. Selena Gomez. Oh yeah. And I don't know who the I other two girls. One of the character. other girls is the wife of the director of the movie. Okay. And uh, there are these four so girls. So you know she's good. They're they're they're. Uh, <laughs> they're these four girls who uh, basically are 
rich kids, rich girls who are just bored of being in school, and uh, they just decide we're done. We're going to go out and have fun on the spring break. Mm-hmm. Ashley Benson and Rachel Corrine. I've never heard yeah. two of them. Um, I've heard Ashley Benson. So I've well, heard just, I, all I can think of is Kevin Smith, when he was married, used to put his wife, uh, like she turns up in, she's one of the jewel thieves in Jane Silent Bob Strike Back. Yeah. She turns up in the one before that too, but she was just horrible. Every well, time she was on screen, my face hurt. It's just, and the For movie gave me a headache. Yeah. It gave her such a headache that she fell asleep. Like, that's why. And it, because everything was shot up. Like, it was just shot weird, too. It was, like, right, like, everything was super close up. There were no, like, full body shot. Everything was, like, this much of your face when they were talking. Oh, okay, so they're going for, like, an auteur look. Like, like yeah. we really dumb. And all, it was all dark. The whole movie was dark. It was almost all at nighttime or in really dark, like, apartments. And when it was light, it was just, like... It, when, when it was lights, it was, like, strobes, like, colorful, bright okay. lights. And it was just brutal. And then, um, oh, and, yeah, so they basically go and they just start having sex and doing a bunch of drugs and yeah. drinking constantly and partying and just losing their minds mm. and they rob a they rob a store to get the money to go there because they don't have enough money to go there so they decide they're gonna rob a store right at the beginning of the movie and uh yeah um the one girl just decides to go home because she's just had enough the selena gomez girl so she's like the good girl the good christian girl out of yeah the group. She's, well, gotta, she's gotta protect her brand yeah. except vanessa hudgens who just fucks him halfway through the movie no she, she yeah she stays the whole one of the girls gets shot so she leaves and yeah, and uh, and then so about halfway through the movie, they're at a strip club, and uh, they're with James. So Ra- spoilers alerts down the road for anyone that might see Spring Break. Oh, I don't even give a shit. Like it's spoiler alerts, but like if you're gonna waste your time watching this movie, you deserve to know. Um, so they're in a strip club with this James Franco character who they meet. He's rapping on a stage and he's just horrible, mm. and uh, he's got like like 12 AR-15s on his wall and like all these guns he's and shit. that guy I got. he's me yeah, yeah. he's me with a couple more million dollars <laughs> yeah, he's, he's the white rapper he's drug dealer white rapper with better weapons yeah paranoid white rapper and drugs That's awesome. so basically uh, they're sitting there with him and they meet uh, this other the other head of the the drug and um, sex trade in whatever city they are it never really says yeah. and uh, it's uh, Gucci Mane the rapper. Okay. This sounds terrible. Let's and not even continue. It's like a drug war. And at the end, they're they're talking to James Franco, and he's like, I'm going to go. Uh, so so the, the girl who gets shot leaves. Yeah. And they're like, the, the two other girls and James Franco stand there. Like, We're going to get them back. We're going to get them back for shooting this girl. And uh, so they go, and they're on a boat, and they go across this, like, river type thing to the other side to, like, the big gang house, and they get out, and... The Vanessa Hudgens chick just shoots him in the back of the head for no reason. Like the James Franco guy. For no reason. And it's like, whatever. And they both have Uzis. And then these two girls go and kill everybody in the house. The other gang house. Trained, like these gangster guys with well, AK-47s. But what you need to understand, Nick, is, is that being a teenage child of uh, uh, upper middle class white families, just naturally you're ready to go out and use automatic weapons yeah. to kill gang members. Yeah, like in bikinis, and they go and they kill him. They they kill the Gucci main guy, mm-hmm. and then they're just like, "It's time to go home." And then they just leave, and it was just kind of like that. Sounds horrible. It was the worst movie I've ever seen in my life. But back to Red Dawn. Mm. It was good. Yeah, it was. It was. I love the original. It's horrible, but I loved it. Um, for time purposes, can we move to Red? Uh, sure. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, listening to actually, I've kind of gone foggy lately. Um. Uh, picked up uh, remastered copies of Rolling Stones' Exile on Main Street. It's their like bluesiest album, and I love the Stones at their bluesiest. I also uh, had copy of Sticky Fingers that I'm spinning a lot lately. You said this last time. Uh, was it the same ones? I'm still spinning them. I'm in love with them. Okay. Um, uh, so then, okay, as far as new stuff, like, I haven't really been listening to a ton of new stuff. Um, yeah, nothing really new there. Watching, we've been watching a ton. Uh Archer, we did the whole run of Archer season one right through the end of the last season. Brilliant, Brilliant. hilarious, love it. Um, uh, oh, what did we do movie wise? Oh, we did a couple uh, just terrible kung fu flicks. Uh, what was the one? Uh, uh, Seven Guillotines, yeah. um, which is beauty. 
Um, like it, the story is terrible, but the fighting is great. Okay. Well, you like you like. Um, yeah, men with the iron fist. Well, and here's the thing: I'm more of the kung fu guy than my wife is. Yeah. Um, uh, we had another look at uh, the old uh, black mask, the original Hong Kong Jet Li black mask, which is amazing. It's some of the best kung fu fighting sequences I've ever seen. Um, and then yeah, like the other thing is the last month and a half, it's been really busy, like just uh, work wise, and had a couple kids in some rough spots and. So yeah, we, we haven't had a ton of extra time for that. I'm trying to think. Oh, there's more that I just can't think playing? of right now too. Uh, playing and will be the show 2013. I love it. Oh, um, I the play. Jays actually win on that one, so it's good. <laughs> um, uh, what else have we been playing? I just went through Dishonored again. Uh, it's, we were doing the storyline where we kill everyone. It's not a great game, but my wife loves the stealth games, and because we game together, that's kind of more her game than mine. Um, and then yeah, we we were looking. Actually, we're in the market for a new game. We'll be grabbing one pretty quick. Um, if I can throw out a suggestion, yeah, yeah. Huh. um, I would recommend you get Bioshock Infinite. Yeah. Well, play the first two. No, I don't think you need to. Yeah, I've, to I've heard it's really kind of repeating a lot of the ideas it's, it's, from the first couple. It's separate, but in a good way. It's it. I've heard. Well, the first I, two are underwater, and the third one's in the sky. Yeah, but Bioshock, like it's it's still a first person shooter, isn't it? Yeah. I, 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 it's a first person experience. It's right. a first person adventure game. A first person adventure game. Yeah. I would, so like I would. Dishonored. So like Dishonored. But, oh, okay. So I, I think you'd like it, just okay. like with some of the morale stuff and. Oh, okay. Cool. But I want to leave you guys with a song. I said I'd do an acoustic performance for you guys. Do so I'm going to do the song. I Someone played it during middle of class the other day, and I got really excited because I knew the song. Um, it's Ben Harper's Burn One Down. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I, is this in honor of the date that we just passed then? No. Uh, no, no I, I just realized what it was about. Oh, okay. But how, did you ju- how did you just realize? I was going to say with the title Burn... Wow, oh, you're, so, you're so good still. I love you. <laughs> Let us burn one from end to end, and pass it over to me, my friend. Burn it long, we burn it slow, to light me up before I'll go. Boom, 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 boom. I feel like I'm having a bloody out-of-body experience or a stroke or something right now. I know. It's like, I almost, I feel like I'm entering the Matrix right now. I keep waiting to wake up in bed sweating going, is this happening? Like, wait, yeah. If you don't like my fire, then don't come around, because I'm going to burn one down. Yes, I am going to burn one down. I feel like That's beautiful. I feel like the hell police are just gonna come in here and be like, oh shit, he's a demon. We didn't even know. We forgot him. And come back and take it uh, down. Matter stove of knowing you. That's not your world. It's not. That's not your thing. How did you not know what that song was about? Because like, you heard the song, you recognized it, and then you just figured out. Wait, well, yeah, I think he might be talking about cannabis here. <laughs> If there is a make fun of stoves, I should have got, it's just going to be Nick and I for three minutes going, but you but die, but you but you but you guys couldn't make fun of me. There's nothing you guys can make fun of me about. I didn't know that that song was about marijuana. Stove. Well, next up, it's going to be Afro Man. Really? Is that what he was talking it's about? It's called Burn One Down. I thought he was talking about houses. And the first. The first. Here I thought it was a love song about pyromania. The he, first. The first two lines are Let Us Burn One from End to End. I've never heard this song, but when you walked in here today and you said Let Us Burn One from End to End, that is the first thing that I thought about. And I can't. But, but in that in, def- in his defense here, let's also say if you're not part of that world, you know, might not be down. Or I thought he was talking about time. a house from one end to one end oh that burned. Oh my god! So <laughs> okay, that's you. all, folks. <laughs> On that note, uh, next week I will be singing. Uh, oh gosh. After- I'll be singing Adia by Sarah McLaughlin, <laughs> and then I can be absolutely shocked when we realize it's about rape. I'll be like, really? That's about rape? And the week after, I'll be singing Unison by SLV, and then be completely shocked oh, that it's about three songs. No, do you know what we should do? We should do a duet of the LL Cool J, Brad, have you heard that thing? Brad Paisley, LL Cool J, Mr. White Man, Mr. Bo- it's like the shittiest song on racial relations I've ever heard. It's horrible. How many songs on racial 
I mean, Ebony and Ivory by Paul McCartney, Stevie Wonder. It's not a great song, but... Ebony and Ivory. Have a good one, folks. See you. Prop them up. Take care.